of the section that I prepared for you for your charge. And I want to refer you to section number 38, because I will read from the letter of the most holy apostle. Yes. Thank you. Paragraph, section 38 of the letter, sorry, section 38, you can see that section where I put that link. Yes. I will read it in full to you. It says, type of matters to be investigated by IP. Section 28, subsection 1, it is the left book, must investigate any debt in police custody, debt as a result of police action, any complaint relating to the discharge of an official firearm by any police officer, raised by any police officer, whether the police officer is on or off duty. Paragraph F, my lord, any complaint of torture or assault against a police officer in the execution of his or her duty. Paragraph G, corruption matters within the police initiated by the executive directorate on his or her own or after the receipt of a complaint from a member of the public or referred to the directorate by the minister and MEC or the secretary as the case may be. And H, any other matter referred to as result of a decision by the executive directorate, if so requested by the minister and MEC or the secretary as the case may be. But the reference that I want to make to you, it's paragraph 28, subsection 1F. Yes, my lord. Do you see that one? I see, I see paragraph F. Paragraph F. Yes. It says, matters to be investigated. It's any complaint of assault. Okay? Yes. And then let's read it in conjunction with Section 29. Now there has been a complaint of assault. Let's hear now what Section 29 says. Reporting obligations and cooperations by members. Section 29, subsection 1. The station commander or any member of South African Police Service or Municipal Police Service must. Paragraph A. Subparagraph A. Immediately after becoming aware, notify the directorate of any matters referred to in section 28.1a to f, which includes f, which I've referred to you as well. So it means any member, and by any member, I'm now referring to you, Brigadier Geninda, that after receiving that complaint in terms of this act, this is what we are supposed to do to report the complaint to the independent directorate, police investigative directorate to investigate the complaint, which was made by the accused in court. Did you do that? <laughs> My Lord, yes. this, 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 this section that I read mm. refers to a complaint. My That's understanding a it's a formal complaint, not information or someone sitting there and saying, mm. this is what I'm saying. I've testified, my Lord, that there were steps that I took, a clear directive, that such complaint in terms of the facts, word of head, who are the suspects, JDA statements taken, docket registered to be, to be done. And the feedback I got was that accused uh, one is not willing to do that. Subsequent to that, my Lord, all entries, relevant entries, showed, including the prison one, that he was not assaulted. That's the first part. But the second part, my lord, matters that get registered to the to IP, council needs to understand, the police has a case that assisted. Matters get registered, in other words, you get, I refer to this matter as A1, that is a complainant statement, because someone needs to allege that this is what happened. Subsequently, the case docket of assault, including torture, whatever the case may be, will get registered captured on the police system. That's how it works, that's the system. It must, be, it must be captured on the police data and then referred to IP. There must be a trail of, of, of evidence. Now, in the absence of A1 of the complaint, what do you refer, my lord? When all registers show that there was no assault, 
reported the complainant or the person who's alleging to be assaulted is not willing to give a statement. <laughs> Unomchetwa sege lola nje ngoba izolo beskate skuma ngaba ngala baba penya yo abazmele uya funda u umeli uguti la u f uti iskala zo na noma ye c p so uguti mshau momentu shawe amapo isa lo momentu loyo ipo isa libelga tele se msebenzi noma linge kote msebenzi lo momentu loyo guamele afage iskalazo sio peinywa umasi ala gu section 29 gu tuwa guamele leso iskalazo sio peinywa uprika tiri gu ya buzwa uguti wenzi le lobo na jengoba kwa kate gune iskalazo esi gu ya gumanga le lobo uguti ushayi utu uprika tiri iskalazo sikumange iskalazo esi semte tuwe la umundu ye waenza istatement uguti mina na gu ngishayiwe ngishawe umundu otize wafaka futhi necala evulela lelo poisa icala bese kuvulwa idokodo lilethwe kuyena ubrigadiye ukuze aye yena ayophenya bese uyonika laba abaphenyayo abazimele ukuze nabo bazokwazi ukuphenya njengoba bakhuluma la ku section 28 no 29 wabo abaphenyi abazimele thank you mr gidinda firstly in paragraph f Let's read it again. It does sorry, not sorry, say sorry. to understand the law applicable. Mm -hmm. When we were listening to that tape, not the, uh, the the recording, there was an attorney apparently representing accused number two on the the fifth, the fifth of March. Is that not so? Uh, not on the fifth, on the twenty seventh. Is it on the 27th when this attorney said to the magistrate that he has received a complaint, a complaint from his clients? That was the 5th of March. Yeah. Is right, yes. That they are being assaulted. Correct. Man. Right? Yeah. Let's play that. Because then the magistrate said, this, who's that, who's that uh, attorney? Nkwane. Right. He told Nkwane to assist his clients to lay a charge. Is that not the evidence, Mr. Ngumezul? That's the evidence. That's it. And if you find or get any problems, the, the commissioner of police must be approached. I think the commissioner of police must be approached so that a, a, a formal complaint can be laid. Is that not so, sir? That's the evidence. When I was listening, now has that been done? Mr. Msololo, you can, or you, but Mr. Who has that been done? My Lord, may I just, just yeah. get clarity from okay. what my colleague is asking? We'll come to the IP. Yes. I'm talking about she was what happened in court. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if that question relates to what happened in relation to accused number one. Before we get into accused number two. Yes. Because the first report that was made to the Brigadier in relation to the line of questioning relates to accuse number one. Subject at at Silverton. At Silverton. What was the date? The, the 10th of July. If I'm and was that report made in court? The, the report was made in court to the presiding office. What was the date in court that day? The, the 10th of July, if I'm not yes. mistaken. Is that, is that so? No, no, no. <laughs> in, not in First Lawrence. I'm referring to. Yes. It, the and that is a complaint regarding Silverton. That's correct. Right, because now Beninda is referring to that. As I understand you, you are referring to that complaint. The one of Silverton, my lord. I'm, I'm referring to the one of Silverton of the 10th mm. of July. Yeah. The accused, all these measures were put into place, um, and he was not willing to make a statement. And no registers confirmed that he was assaulted. Okay. Kutigia kutu wagu uonge la maka la lao bewafagi we agu uko la umanga lelwa yena aye wazi niselu wenzi stadme Esho yuguti yebo ngisha yuwe ngisha wa ubani nini kumpi Right, I'm sorry to interfere But for my understanding, how do you lodge a complaint? Is it on affidavit? Or is it just verbal? There's no record of that My lord, I think it would be unfair for me to be cross-examined by the court when I'm putting I'm not cross questions to the witness. I'm not cross-examining you. I'm just, I just want to understand the law. May I then be given the opportunity to put questions to the witness? No, no. Listen. I want to understand the law. You, you have told 
you've given me this. As you say, that is the applicable law. Yes. And I want to understand because from the record, it appears that the magistrate Avenga intervened to the attorney who was, is that not? My Lord, I'm not referring to that Okay, one. okay, fine, go yes, ahead. I'm okay. not okay. referring to that one. All right, all right, yes. sorry about that. I'm referring to, to the one that was uh, made in Tembisa court, my Lord. In Tembisa court? Yes, in Tembisa court about Silverton police officers. Okay, fine, yes, on which day, you say it was on the 10th? On the 10th of July. Okay, fine, you can go on. And that complaint, my lord, was made by accused number two okay. in full court. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, my lord, accused mm -hmm. number one in Tembisa, not accused number two. <coughs> the exhibit would clear the, the record, my lord. So, there was a complaint, my lord, according to my understanding, which was made in full court about the assault and about the police officers in Silverton. <coughs> And then my next question is, my lord, with that complaint which was reported in a court of law, which was related to you, Brigadier, as the head of the, the unit, what did you do with that complaint? Because this act precise, precisely says the complaint must be referred to the Inspectorate Police Investigative Directorate Directive <coughs> for further investigation. As a court piece, my lord, I think my learned friend um, should have also made a copy of the regulations issued in terms of the IP, IP, uh, IPID Act, because these regulations must be read in conjunction with the Act. Now, she's reading um, the, the act in isolation and if one looks at, uh, I had a quick look at the regulations. For instance, regulation two says, uh, reporting of matters to the uh, investigating directorate. A station commander or any member of the South African police or the municipal police service must say within the period mentioned in section 29.1b that my Leonard Fern has quoted, of the ex submit a written report, yeah. a written report to the directorate regarding any matter listed in section 281A. That is now the section that my Leonard colleague is busy with. Uh, and furthermore, um, regulation 4B, which is the most important one, says a person who lodges a complaint in terms of sub-regulation must do so in writing yeah. uh, by fax or electronic mail mm -hmm. and it says the provisions of sub-regulation 3 uh, uh, will then apply. So in other words, my lord, we say um, it's very dangerous to read the, the act in, in isolation. It must be read in conjunction with the regulation, which makes it clear that a complaint must be in writing as the witness has testified to. Can I proceed? Yes, I thought you were proceeding. Thank you. Brigadier, I put it to you that if you had complied with the provisions of this section, an independent members of the IPID would have been appointed to approach the accused, obtain the necessary statement, and also to do further investigations. No, but, but that's not correct, my lord. Council knows he was working for the state. You need to have A1, a complaining statement to understand the allegation that has been made. What do I comply with when you can you don't have the existing A1 or any document or even an eyewitness who says I've witnessed such an assault? Ngiyakwa zisa ke ukuthi bekwamele njengoba kuye kwaba nale sizikhalazo bekwamele labantu laba baphenya amacala abazimele babizwe noma baziswe uthi obrigade uma iphendula uthi cha kumele uyazi wayekade esebenzela umbuso kwamele kube ne statement a1 we statement lesu muntu akhalaza khona ukuthi ngihlukunyeziwe 
Okay, I won't argue with you. I'll leave that one for argument. Let's proceed. Brigadier, I'm going to hand in my lot with the leave of the court, <coughs> exhibit XX, if I'm not mistaken. It was. If you can give the state one copy and the witness one copy. My lord, I did not prepare the the copy for the court for the court because we have used this exhibit. It's a it's a statement regarding interview with suspect, my lord. It was marked exhibit XX. The one that was handed in by Mr. Nisi. Indeed, my lord. Indeed, my lord. Yes. That's why I did not make an additional copy, my lord. Mm. Thank you, my lord. Brigadier, I just want to refer you to a few paragraphs of this uh, performer. It's by SAPS. It's form number 3M, in brackets, small letter M. Statement regarding interview with suspects. Okay. The reason why I'm referring you to this form is because you had interviews with suspects on different occasions. Do you understand? I do, my lord. Yes. Okay. And then, without wasting the court's time, paragraph one, completion of statement. Okay? I'll ask you to read it to the court. Paragraph so, one, sub, sub paragraph A, my lord. So it reads as follows, my lord. The station commander must consult with the prosecutor on circumstances in which the prosecutor requires that a warning statement of a suspected of a suspect be obtained in, in of a suspect to be obtained. In every such case, the suspect must be interviewed and this statement must be completed. <coughs> This statement must be completed every time the suspect is interviewed, irrespective of whether the suspect has been arrested or not. Okay, thank you. You, you understand that this form must be completed every time whenever there is an interview, irrespective of whether the suspect has been charged or not. That, that, that's the, the line I wanted to bring it to your attention. Yes, but my Lord Council is, is, is leaving something out important that it said this form refers to that interview as directed by the prosecutor. It's a different scenario when the police, it, in no way does it refer to interviews of the police. It's very specific. You are directed by the prosecutor to obtain an explanation. And naturally, you communicate the outcome of the, of the, of the suspect in the form of a warning statement to the NPA. And that's what paragraph uh, one says, my lord. No, it doesn't say so. Let's read paragraph four, sorry, my lord, for the interpretation. La akata kufunda kwa na upregatire ugutwa uma abashushi sibati ama poisa babuze abasolwa imibuzo kwa mele gube nezinto ego tiziatu adesu ala uma upregatire pendu la uti mele unga kwa uguti la uti wa uma abashushi sayo uti ama poisa beso manje abama ngalelo imibuzo kusuga unga abashushi si abachele ama poisa uguti babuze Abo, 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 We've been down this road before when Surgeon Mukhani was testifying. I think we even um, quoted authorities and, and, and filed heads on this matter. It was debated. I think it's, it's a matter that can be best left for argument, my lord. I don't know how it impinges on a trial within a trial because at this, at this stage, this court is busy, ceased with the exigency of a trial within a trial, which is a compact interlocutory process, which has its bearing as to whether any confession made by any of the accused or a witness, if there is a dispute that it was not freely and voluntarily made, 
without coercion in a person's sane and sober senses. If a prima facie case is made by the prosecutor, after having advised the court that he intends using that document which is supposedly or allegedly a confession, then when the state has led that evidence, the accused themselves, if they so desire, they come with countervailing evidence to rebut the allegations by the state which are laid down by its witnesses. This is what this process is about. It is not about the merits. But if you are saying this question you are asking relates to proving the admissibility and otherwise, no problem, you go ahead. But I've sent this song to say that this process we are in is about the admissibility of a confession. Okay. My Lord, I will submit that the line of questioning regarding this form which I have referred the witness to is on the circumstances under which those statements were taken. Yeah, fine. It, it contains, my Lord. No, no, you can go ahead. Thank you, my Lord. Let's continue, Brigadier, with paragraph B. Before, my Lord, we go to paragraph B, I wanted to, 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 to bring it to the attention of the court um, that this form that counsel has referred me to is not a prescribed form. In other words, it's not the only warning. There are no prescribed form in the warning statement. So it's not a golden rule that this is the only way you must do it. Other forms are not, they don't even have this option. So you have various uh, 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 warning statements, others that are even two or three pages long. So, so this is not the way. That this is not the way that the standing order says, and uh, and it's regulated in the standing orders, my lords, to that effect. A farm of which is not clear that eating it at the cellar, Uguti Aksu, Uguti Le Form Le, Umedi Angiona, Yona Yot, or Umteto Water, Omi, the Uguti, Kwamele Naganja, Umabuza, Umsola, Imibuzo, Umbuz and Galenzela. Economy imitato, Eminia Mite, Ukula, Le Engini Weona, Aksu Guti. Unfortunately, Brigadier, I'm the only one who is putting questions to you. I'm not going to argue with you with your line of questioning. The form I'm referring you to is the form that is prescribed by the SAPS Police Services. And I'm asking you to read paragraph B into the work. Yes, my lord, I'm not actually, just to clarify, I'm not asking questions to cancel. I'm simply clarifying for cancel to know that this is not the only form. Yeah, can you read so, paragraph B now? Yes, cancel, you can read, give me a chance. Read it. Because I need, you know, give me a chance, I need to, because I'm assisting the court. That impression must not be given that this is the only form prescribed. I've never asked this. what you are saying. I've never asked Mr. what you're saying. Mr. Sholol, how, how are we going to proceed now? Like we're in a tavern now. This is a senior police, he's a brigadier. You ask him a question, he proffers an answer. Give him a chance to answer. If he is wrong, you can argue that later. But now you're stopping him from speaking. And then you're, you're speaking at cross purposes. Because he says the standing orders don't prescribe that form. And you are saying the South African police services prescribe that form. So maybe you should produce the law, both of you. Not even both of you. Because he says, <coughs> There is no standing order which says, am I quoting you correct, sir? Yes, I'm saying, my Lord, there's no standing order that says this is the only prescribed form for taking a warning statement. And, and there is there is, uh, there is an authority that speaks to that, my Lord. My Lord, I okay. apologize no, no, for, continue, continue. for interjecting the witness, my Lord. But the witness, Brigadier, as a senior member of the police, he must understand that he is supposed to answer the question that has been put to him and stop. I have asked him, my lord, to read paragraph B. Instead of reading, instead of complying with the instruction, he's coming with explanations which, which have not been invited or asked by myself, who is a cross-examiner in these proceedings. My lord, my understanding, I'm here to assist the court, not to allow an insinuation that I can see it's misleading. All I said is that it is incorrect to say 
This is the only form prescribed by the ACPS. There are many forms. There's no specific form that says this is the only form for the warning statement. And I felt that must be made here in the court. It was not meant to undermine or stop uh, cancer because it didn't come. From my understanding, I understood cancer to be saying this is the form ACPS prescribed for the warning statement. And I wanted to correct it, that that is not correct. Are you done? Yes, I'm done. OK, can you comply with my instructions now? Which Read paragraph B. The member who conducts the interview with the suspect has to complete this form fully in the presence of the suspect. Umuntu ipoisa elienza i interview la buza kona umsolo imibuzo kwa mele atwa lise i form leli el kazwana. Okay. Umsolo a e call. Paragraph C. If there is not enough space for any on any of the pages, the member must continue on a separate follow, follow page. This follow must be, um, must be signed by the member, suspect, interpreter, and the commissioner of oath, and must be attached to the statement. Umayengabe is kala lapo asene langa umundu angasebenzisa elinye ipeji egwa mele nisainwe iwongu mundu ozabe eko na lapo umsolwa ipoisa utoligi nalo ozabe ekifiza isteth. Yes, paragraph D. The commissioner of oath must sign on every page of the statement. Lo ekifiza istembe egwa mele asaine wonke ama page. Paragraph F. If the suspect is a child. Paragraph F. Paragraph F. All, all deletions must be initiated by the suspect, the interpreter, and the member who conducted the interview with the suspect as well as the commissioner of oath. Konke la gusulwa kwa na wamele gusayi nwe no magwenzu ama initials ila bantu bonke abakona la. Can you also read paragraph one? The names of all persons present. The names of all persons present during the interview must be recorded. Um, this includes all members present, the parent of the child, or a legal practitioner. Okay. Okay. I will pause here for now and then ask you to read paragraph six. Um, paragraph six must be delete, must be deleted if no questions are put to the suspect. If the suspect indicates that he or she is not willing to answer any questions, this refusal must be recorded um, in the space below paragraph six. The suspect may thereafter not be questioned further. Any reason given by the suspect for the refusal to answer questions must also be recorded. If, should I proceed? Sorry. Uma ingabe umsolwa yena ati agazmiselanga ugutubega na loko kwa melu kupalwe uguti ute agazmiselanga ugutubega. Uma ingabe upana ngezi zaatu na zo kwa mele zipalwe lezo izatu uguti ingani umsolwa ati agazmiselanga ugutubega nga leso statement. It's fine with paragraph A, B and C. And then let's go above to paragraph 5. A, if the suspect is willing to make a statement. But not willing to make it, okay. If the suspect is willing to make a statement, but not willing to make the statement to the member, the suspect may personally see to the drawing up of a statement or make a statement to a magistrate or justice of the peace. Umayengabe umsolwa engazimiselanga ukwenza statement kuyiphoyisa lo msolwa loyo angahle yena ngokwakhe azibhalele sona leso statement noma angasenza phambi kwamanje B of the same paragraph paragraph 5 if neither of these choices are acceptable to the suspect and he or she has another proposal it should be recorded as Oma ingabe lezi zinto ezi palwe la aziko mtaombe umsolo wa utiena agaz miselangu tangayenza noma yini 
ela phayana kwamele kubhalwe ukuthi yena ke uthi ufisa ukuthi lesi statement kwenziwe njani ngaso okay thank, thank you for now uh, those are the paragraphs that i wanted you to read into the record let's now go to the transcript my lord of uh, the 28th of november 2023 it's the Examination in chief during trial within a trial of the witness. I have asked the state to make a copy available to the witness. Yes, I have the copy, my lord. Then, page nine of the same transcript, line number 17. I'll read it into the record so that we, we can be fast. Okay. This was your response. My Lord, yes, so thereafter I have put to him that I have a reason to believe that he was involved in the killing sense of Meiwa. His response, my Lord, tata mounted to a confession. I see that, my Lord. And then, I think I also <coughs> asked this question yesterday, but now I'm asking in respect of what you said in your examination in chief, that what was said by the accused tata mounted to a confession. What is it that was said by the accused which tata mounted to a confession? Because I say, I think this is your interpretation to say, my Lord, what the accused said tata mounted. So I want to see it clearly. What is it that was said by accused at that time? To refer to you, are you aware of a... Sorry, Rose. I want to move this in here. Rose, decision is going to be... Let me see if you... Hunter Hunter, Hunter Hunter is the biggest. No, but I want to say to you, are you aware of the fact that when you are asking this witness to repeat what your client has said, then that evidence could possibly be applicable in this court determining the admissibility or otherwise of the confession. Thank you, my lord. Can I, can, can I just rephrase the question? Brigadier, is, it is correct that the accused responded when you're speaking to him in respect of this passage which I've referred you to? That is correct, my lord. If you want to say that you have a question, Ute umsolwa impendulo yakhe ubone ukuthi ingathi usekazi ufuna ukugonyuluka uthi yebo Was that recorded anywhere in this form or in any document was it recorded uh, Well let's start with the form and what I, I think I've explained that the form was not present at that time it okay. was an interview and the interview I had with him was summarized uh, in the in the diary it was a diary Council knows it. You summarize basically the events. It's not like writing a statement, but in statements, um, if the question then goes further, is it documented anywhere? Yes, in the state, in statement, various statements it appears in the investigation diaries. I even referred to Mr. Numan, 178, 179, 180. It, it appears. But the form, um, because that's the start of the question, this form, as I said, is not a prescribed form, and I was not taking a warning statement. It was an interview. No, it was not completed. Lento ayi kulumile iye ya palwa na gule form leana utika ayi palwa anga. Okay, and then let's go further on the same page wherein you say, I then ask him obviously after the discussion, my lord, as to whether he would be willing freely and voluntarily to make such a statement to an independent officer. How did the accused become aware of the independent officer that we are referring to? Because I asked him, I told him, I asked him, as, as, as it says here, my Lord, I asked him that will he be, exactly as it says, I then asked him, obviously, after the discussion, my Lord, as to whether he'll be willing 
freely and voluntarily to make such a statement to an independent officer. That's exactly how it was, because I was aware that he's making a confession, and such confession, in my view, was being made freely and voluntarily. Now, as for best, uh, uh, best practice, to rule my lord, I prefer that an independent officer should be the one taking it. So I wanted to establish from him if he'd be willing to do that, and the answer was yes. And, and also... Umsolo manje waze ganjani ngalo muntu omunye ozmele lobo gato umbu zangaye uguti uzmiselo uguti angayo kunuluga kumuntu ozmele onge ekola uti uprikati ringa lendela ngi kaza ngakwa nuguti itema ito tukuluma ngambu uzake uguti uzmiselo uguti lento umjela yo ungayo ichela omunye muntu ozmele onge ekola pagati wetu ula umanga lela watiyebu in other words, so I said, in other words, my Lord, what he told me, I knew that it has to be documented so that it becomes some form of evidence that we can use. And the best practice that one thought of at the time was to have such evidence documented by an independent officer. So that is how this issue of an independent person comes in, my Lord. Ngoba lento lebe gate aisho ngienga bono guti guamele ipalwe ngate iseche nziso njengo bufagazi inga kongienga ati and also during that interview, that conversation that you are just referring to was also not recorded that you have explained to the accused about this issue of independent officer. It was not recorded during that interview. It but was oral. You know, but I got it where, my Lord, helps the question to, to be specific. Because I said, I've summarized my interaction with the accused in my, di in my diary. Subsequent to that, there were statements under oath that I've made. Some I had to read here at, at the request of Mr. Ngomezu, the investigation diary. So it depends. If the question is to say they are not rec recorded on the warning statement that counsel referred me to, the answer is yes, because I didn't use the warning statement. But to say they are not recorded, they are recorded, my Lord, in various cases. Manje lezi ndo lezi ozu kulumaya aguko la zipalwe kona utu prikatiri ziguko na nangi pale kona nangoko nginga pala ngagule nwati le eyo pala itatme ngoba mina nginga pala nga mafupi kwe diariam futi ngienze ne itatment la ngifunge kona uguti lento engi isho yogu ikweniso eye zinto ele, ele, ele zinto eze nzage in your diary, if you are referring to the diary, that this right was explained to the accused that you can be taken to an independent person. I've gone through your diary. If maybe you can assist me if there is a line I skipped which says the accused was appraised of the right that he can be taken to an independent person. I'm talking about the independent person here. Yes. Yeah, my Lord, it might, it might not have come up as independent. As I said, it's a diary. But it is specific that I contacted an Mboto. I even mentioned his number and specifically mentioned on the diary that he, thought he was to assist with the statement. It's the same entry when it comes to Lieutenant Kelly Rapado. One is to take into account the space I was working, with, uh, I was working on and cancel every the cope of my diary. But the mentioning of the independent officers are mentioned there including their contact details to show that this was done. The issues of rights being given to the accused are also mentioned, but of course, because it's a diary, you can't, it's not like making a statement like I'm saying, the space is congested. So you sum up, but independent person is there, the contact number of that person is there, the issues of rights is there, it is clear that it was an arrangement for the confession. Utige umeli lenda bande yomuntu ozimele petelez independent person. Ayi kola ipalwe kona na gui daria kungi bugi li daria kumai pendulu prikati uti yebo ngoba na gui daria nganga tengi palanga ma upi izindo ez kuluniwe fu tingi pali le no puti uzo isiwa na gupo isa eltiz gapala na ma number wake ngoba nganga tengi songa na gui daria aksu puti benu pala yonki intongo ba space daria. Let's move further to page 12 of the same transcript. Line number 12 to 18, can you read it into the record? Um, my Lord, can I ask Cancel to assist me reading that sort of steps for the sake? If you don't mind, Cancel. Oh, 
it's your evidence. This is your evidence. Can you read it for me? Which, which, which part? That's what I'm referring to. Page 12. Yes. Line number 12, wherein it says, Mr. Gininda, mm. my lord, they handed the suspect, accused one, to me. Yes. Yes, that one. And I asked him if he was fine or if he had any complaint. He said he was fine, my lord, and there was no complaint from him. I further asked him, my lord, if he will be still be willing to point out um, to point out the following day, I was very specific a witch doctor that came up in our discussion, and the answer was yes, he is willing to do to do that freely and voluntarily, my lord. Giengambuza ge uma ele twa gimi um solwa uguti ye na u lungi lena wati yebo, agana so is kalazo futi ngambuza uguti usas mi selena uguti ksasa wapona angate akombe inyanga lebe skate sukumangayo yena wati yebo. I understood on the previous on the previous questions regarding an independent person you said that was not specifically recorded in the diary. But then now I'm moving further down to the stage wherein the accused now was indicating that he wants to do the pointing out. Is, was that also recorded during the interview or not? My Lord, perhaps maybe I should read the entry of the page yet. So council can understand when I say you summarize. Um, and I've made this copy available, for example, on the issues of the data, that is regard to accused number one. On one page, you have 30 and 31, on one page. So the columns are very small, my lord. There is no way you can document a data as if you're writing a statement. You sum up the context. Then you go to, for example, the investigation time. Then, of course, in the statement, you will go into details. What, for example, my lord, uh, uh, the data of, 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 of May it says, first it refers to the case number, then it indicates that I got a report from Captain Yenze, Sergeant Mukola, that the suspect, Moses Sibia, has been arrested for the case of drug dealing possession of uh, unlicensed uh, um, uh, uh, ammunition. I went to interview the suspect at Phosphorus. Sorry, sorry, my apologies, my lord, for, for, for intervening. I have not asked you, Brigadier, to read the content of the 31st May right. uh, 2020, what we have written. <coughs> I have been specifically asking you if this right which was elected by the accused i'm very particular it was recorded that he has now elected to make a pointing out in other words i'm asking a recording in respect of the pointing out not the whole recording that you made on that particular but my lord, that's exactly where I was going, because if you read further, because what transpired on the 31st started on the 30th, and then if you go further with this statement, it indicates that he was warned according to his constitutional rights. That's exactly where I was going. it flows from there. Then on the 31st, the day in question, that's where it indicates the issues of the witch doctor, but the starting point starts on the 31st. So the person is warned on the 31st, then it's, on, it's an, an ongoing on process. So you can't just jump on it to the 31st, it starts here on the 30th. I was not with the accused on the 31st. I was with him on the 30th, I interviewed him, I gave him, I gave him his constitutional rights as prescribed by the Constitution, and then things started flowing. Manjege, umeli ubega de eti, ubega de anga fundi lezindo azba li lengoba, ufunu kaze lo anje, uguti nalenda ba le, ye uguti ufuna ubiyo komba, Uye watazi selwa na malungelo uti obrigatiri bengfunda ngiti mfunu kuboni sabo na loko Uguti uma use uye tanga loko ngipadile gula iguti na kona Gula uye uya kazo wage uguti umanga lelo uye wachelo wage ama lungelo wage Nga pangu uguti ayenze loja kukomba njengo ba ebu Ok, but brigadier, whether it's overlapping from the 30th to the 31st I'm just being specific to the time when the interview was done regarding the pointing out, wherein he indicated that he wanted to do the pointing out. But my lord, that's not how confessions are done. I think I think that's the point I'm trying to get you to answer. When fine. you interview, sorry, when you interview a person, 
and you establish, for example, you want to establish, I was not taking a formal confession. Kenan Mboto is the one who would have documented what he did. Mm -hmm. I interviewed him to establish whether he is not under threat, he wants to speak to me freely and voluntarily and without any undue influence. When I was satisfied with that, is to refer him. There is no prescribed rule that says, I've never seen it, that when you interview a person before you refer him to an independent officer, you must document everything. Then I'm taking the confession, my lord. Then I might as well set with a form, recorded each and every answer, and that document would have, would have amounted to me taking the confession, because that was the essence. But for the best practice rule, you refer to someone so that that evidence at least has some credibility, because okay. I was seized with this matter. My taking of the confession could have been viewed uh, uh, differently, no okay. matter how, how objective it was. That's how it's done, my lord. I've never seen a situation where, because that's what I'm getting from counsel, that I was supposed to sit with a form <coughs> or a piece of paper and say, I'm giving him this right and I'm documenting it here. I'm giving him this right, then I'm taking the confession. Okay. Precisely what I was trying to avoid by appointing or requesting an independent officer. <laughs> Uti ye ye na waegate ebuza imibuzo ukubonu kuthi umsolo uzmisele ukuluma futi aga kwa nga futi aga 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 shawa nga noma agnanto eguti imenze uguta kwenye sega zmisele ukuluma ye na waegate enga pali pansi goba ubegate enga tati leso statement inga ako e kwenye sego tu ufuna umundu uwe statu uguti bube uyena Ozo tata leso statme yena bega de ech ech olange uguti um solo akso uguti upoto we noma ushaiwe uguze azo yenza leso statme. Very good, Brigadier. Thank you for that explanation. So it was not recorded because it's not the best practice rule that it must be done like that. Thank you. No, 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 Katia, please. I'm saying when I say recording, I'm saying I did not take the formal confession okay. statement. Okay. Because okay. what you're asking me to say, I should have said. Do you understand your right to remain silent? And I document it in my view and my understanding. Then it means I would have had to start completing a confession statement. And precisely for the best critics rule, I did not want to do that because I was seized with this matter. I wanted someone independent, provided, of course, the accused was willing to, to do the film voluntarily. And that's the impression I got. And hence, I referred him to Kennedy Mbotto. Thank you. I heard you loud and clear. Manje ge ubrigadi otiye na agazanya apale pants in jemo ba bega buza imi buzongoba beguzo kina guba inga ti iye na manje uye na otata lesia statement esfuna kwenzwa umsolo iye na inga ako atinese ibuti ube gade emnigela kwa mwenye umundu uwezi hati. Brigadia, if I follow your examination in chief in this transcript and from the pages that I've referred to you, uh, this interview between yourself and accused number two, accused number one, where he indicated that he wanted to make a pointing out, happened in the middle of the night when he was taken back from Kenan Boto. Am I correct? No. He was, he was taken back from Kenan Boto? Mm back to your office. Correct. Yes, am I correct? Yeah, but you're not correct to say the interview. As I said, the interview started earlier. When he was brought back, it was simply to establish if he was fine because he was coming from Kenyan Board and the answer was yes. And to establish, after warning him, if he was still wanting to assist with the, or rather do the pointing out of the wish doctor. When the answer was affirmative, then that's when I referred him that uh, Sergeant Mokula will talk to him tomorrow, but if he should change his mind or want to consult, then he can inform him. So, so, so what happened when he came back from Kenyan Boto was a follow-up of what was discussed earlier before he went to Kenyan Boto. Manje, the way that we saw that the umso lo abenga the ngulme na inga pamgo guta iswe gu Kenyan Boto uma ebu ya genga mbuza na kwa na futi uguti ubega the esafu na na ubega ubega the esas misele wati yebo inga koge nye inga mchela uguti uzo isi wage gu sache no mkona uguze akubege na kona nga mtebisi uguti uma inga abe kisasa kwa kona uma unga safu ni ukubega unga asho bese ingizo tola leo mpendu dole ok let me try not to confuse you brigadier i'll take you a little bit back to paragraph to the same page line number two so that maybe you can recall 
Number two, you testified in your examination in chief on the same page that so then after a few minutes, suppose maybe 10 to 15 minutes, they then arrive back. This is now Constable Monare with this member as well as with accused number one, my lord. So it means the accused is taken back to you. That's, that's what I said, my lord. Yes. That's yes. what I said earlier. Yeah. Gishonjado, Ugutu Umsolo, Uyewa Letwa, Ebuis, Wagimi, Ebuis, Munaren, no Munya, Dobega Sebenzana. So, what you are referring to in pages 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 happened, transpired when the suspect was brought back to you after the statement had been taken from Kenan Board. My Lord, as I'm saying, the conversation of the witch doctor started earlier. The discussions when he was brought back, I think after midnight, was very short. It was, as I said, and, I, and I'm repeating it again, my lord, it was established, it was established if he was fine, which that the answer was affirmative, and whether he would still be willing to carry on with the pointing out of the witch doctor the following day. It was not the start of the conversation. It was already discussed earlier before he went to Canada Board. Ingoko Yenyanga, I Kalanga, Uma Segabuya, who can elmbot, Bessis, who me, then Gayo, Papango, which I have who can elmbot, Yoguti, Utu Funu, your comba, Lenyanga, Lean, Uma Ebuya, Ben Safunu, and the Eskrim Sego, so good Usas Missel and Na, Uguti, Ayo Comba, Leanyanga, Lebega Fuman, I am a Pango, which I have who can elmbot. Okay, let's move further to page thirty of the same transcript, page, line number 21 to 24. Page, uh, page 13. Page 13, yes, page uh, 13. Yeah, but my page 13 ends at, at paragraph 20. My page 13 ends at 20. Yeah, that's line 20, which says, was like, you know, that's line 20. Line number 21, line 22, 23, 24, 25. The last line is the one which says, Mr. Baloy, what time did you part ways with him? Um, okay, but Council, what I'm saying is in, in the transcript that I have, I, I only have paragraph 20, I don't have 21. Is that, is, is that what you want me to read? I don't have paragraph 21 yet. It's line, it's the line. Line 20. 20. Okay, it's so the should line I read 20. from line 20? That yes. Okay, Sorry was, about this. <laughs> okay, no, it's fine, it's fine, Council. So was line... I meant paragraph 20, line number 20. I understand. Was like you know when you want or when something has been taken off. Okay, your sorry. Can can you start? Sorry to disturb. Can you start a bit to line number nineteen where he says he was looking better than when he was like, just to complete the sentence. Line nineteen, just above twenty. He was looking better than when he was like you know when. You want when you want or when something has been taken off your shoulders. But other than that, my lord, there was no sign of fear, concern, or threats that I detected when I observed him. And I also did not see any visible injuries when I was talking to him, my lord. Okay. Got to beg me an umpa, Noma is in Bows or Guti, who begat a two gile Noma, Enga Enga Nel Seganga. And you also checked him if he had any visible injuries, am I correct? It, well, not physically by observing, yes, I did, I did observe, but I did not. If, if the question is to say I checked him, like I physically examined him, no, but I didn't see any visible injuries. Oh. Okay, according to your knowledge, Brigadier, as the lead investigator, was the accused taken to the district surgeon before and after the statement to Colonel Mboto was taken? No, he wasn't. Umsolwa, uye wa isi wa na buto gotela norma inyanga eyo mtola nga pam goguti aye gu kenel mboto na nyemba gogutabu ye gu kenel mboto tika. 
agazanya IC. Do you see that if the accused was taken to a district surgeon, the doctor would have been a neutral person to examine accused number one and to complain and to confirm if there were any con complaint of assault made by accused number one. The doctor meaning that by neutrality, I mean he was not part of the police if he was taken to the doctor. The doctor would have recorded the J88, record if there were any injuries, visible or old, and also any complaint that was made. Mm. Yes, my lord. So I think one needs to look at the requirements of making a confession and that it must be made freely, voluntarily, without any undue influence. Nowhere does it say a person must be taken to a district session as a requirement. Now, I know other police officers, perhaps they, just, they want to do that practice. It varies from person to person. Others <coughs> may even want to take photos during that mission. But insofar as the requirement, you need to satisfy yourself that the person before you is willing to make this confession freely, voluntarily, without any undue influence, and he understands his constitutional rights. I was satisfied with that, my lord, when I referred him to Colonel Bolton. I do not think there's a provision that says he must be taken to a medical doctor before the confession is taken. I'm <laughs> I see where good dog or tailor, I am taller, base and onion bubble, which I is, I is ascends, is that mend, base, we are we sell a good dog or tailor, which he am taller. Abaye, baye, baye, and zilo, cogodwa, mina, ngokwa, mingi, and gampega, gambon, gutum, solo, and a waigate, and a nazim bows of limala, nay, gambuza, what he aga limalanga, aga shawanga, godwa, abaye, bayan, baya, wenza, loco, axu, which guamele. And my lord, I believe the officers who were involved, um, beside the magistrate who were involved in the taking of these confessions, are senior officers, my lord. If they detected um, assault or anything, I really, really doubt um, and do not believe that they would have proceeded with this, uh, with this, with the taking down of these confessions, because that would have been the case with me. If I picked up that he was assaulted or he gave me any indication that he was threatened, there is no way I would have said, go and see the doctor and then go and do the confession, because that would, have, would not have been um, made free and voluntary. That would have been the end of it, except the reporting of the case and obvious steps being taken against the perpetrators. Futi yengi atembu guti nala mapuwe isalawa atate lezi dadmenti zabasolo, abanto eiguti bona abango otwe peshe spuwe iseni futi bakulu, Na same seven zinuabo, acts bonabanto abegate bengati, uma umsolo bembona ugutu ushaiwe, noma utu selwe, banga kubega batate lezo itadment. Nyatebu guti nami njengwa ba nyenga mbona, uguti lomundu agashawanga agatu selwanga, nyenga ti akugutewe, yinga ako na bonya kabangu ti na buba kubege nyenga yogutu mabembona, babone uguti agatu selwanga futi agashawanga yinga ako baye bakubek. So in other words, there was no need of taking the accused to the district surgeon because the statement was made to a senior officer. No, but that's not what I said, my lord. Oh. I, 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 think, I think the last part council is referring to is the last part of my, my testimony. I started with the requirements of making a confession and I articulated what is it that I understand to be the requirement. And that is the statement must be made freely, voluntarily, without any undue influence. I'm repeating it, I don't know many times you do respect my lord. And I said, accused must be also be aware of his constitutional rights. Accused one and two, when I interviewed them, they were aware of these rights. And the impression I got, they were willing to make these statements freely and voluntarily, my lord. And I said, which is also a repetition, there is no rule that says a medical doctor, accused must be taken to a medical doctor for examination <coughs> before the requirements of taking a, a confession are met. I'm not aware of that, 
agai swanga ngoba and gibona nga impa ogokana umangi kulma na na noma ebu ya angis bona nga impa ozoguti uli mele noma uthu selwe. Okay, thank you, Brigadier, for that response. Let's move further to page twenty-four of the same transcript. Page twenty-four. Yes, my lord, I'm there. Yes, it's uh, it starts from line from line number twenty one, but I want to refer you to line number twenty five. Maybe you can just read the whole paragraph, which says, Mister Kiminda, Kininda, then my lord, on the fourth, on the fourth of June, twenty twenty, I approached the accused. I mean, approached approached the accused one in Valeria, who warned him according to his constitutional rights and established if he was still willing to do the formal pointing out of the crime scene. The answer was yes, and he also indicated that he <coughs> did not need an attorney as well, my lord. Yes. Mina genga lelo langa ngienga kuluma numsolo anga mbuzu kutusa zmisele na ugyo komba indawo la wenza gele ise sagalo yena wati yebo futi agafuni umeli. This was also not recorded that he elected not to appoint a legal representative. Um, record it where, my lord, because I've said it's documented in my statement. There's a summary of the events on the fourth, because on the fourth, on the fourth, the diary which I made available to to to, 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 to defence has a summary. I did indicate this is a diary, but in statements and various statements that we disclosed to the defence, my lord, it's, it's indicated. It, it, it's, I mean, it's, in, it's indicated there. It's only this form, the warning statement, that was not used. Nagologo foot agupalwanga pants ugutum solo ute yena agafun umeli uti benga pala pants go pingoba jango basen kazi lo gutu we daya ringi palenga mafupi uguti bengi num solo asa kuluma futi we dad men dizami gebula uguti kuye gwapalwa ngo ngo gutwala uguti gikulmena ye sakumangani. Gula siya statement, esibizwa i warning statement, gula i kuti agupogu, aangzangi ngin stebenzis. Thank you. Let's go down further on the same page, page 25, line number 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, it goes up to uh, the following page 26, line number 1, 2, and 3. My Lord, after, so it reads as follows, my Lord. It says, my Lord, after getting the confirmation that he still wants to proceed freely and voluntarily, I then made a few calls until I got to Lieutenant Colonel Hadebe, who was prepared to assist with the pointing out. My Lord, Lieutenant Colonel Hadebe said he can assist um, the following day, which is the 5th of June, 2020, and he requested that accused one should be detained at Alberton SAPS, where he will then make arrangements to book him out and carry on with the formal pointing out. Yeah, but sorry, should I carry on? The last no, it, it, it's fine. It's fine with, the, with that name. Ngemba goguti se nkulume na ye umsolo aye, ngemba goguti sega shilo goguti yebo ya funu kubega, ngenga ashaya uti ngonga ngifuna na na bantu nga atena se ntole ulu Kenel Hatebe, Oye Wati and Uzmi Selugutanga Caesar, Gotwa Uzo Caesar and Yelanga Elande Lelayo, Yena Wakubega Wakela, Uguti Umsolo Wakala, Abewe Espoisenisase Albertin, Ulai Guti and Uzoza, Azomlanda Konala. Brigadier, at what time did you make the squad? If you can recall, if you can't recall, just. Uh. Uh, I think I think it would have been during the day, my lord. I, I can't really be precise with the time, but okay. I know that it would have been during the day. Lolia tingo ulshayengo banis kati uti nango konye kumbule is kati kodo ya kabangu tibekate kuse mini. Were there any persons that you were with when you were making this call to Colonel Hardebe? No, I don't. I don't recall, my lord. What I know is that I spoke to him because I even documented the cell number he was using that time in 2020 where I reached him. Beguna Bantuna, Abogate Unabo, Ngaleskati Ushaya Lolo Tringo Uti Ankumbuli Loko Godwa, 
ngibhalile inombolo yakhe yocingo le bekade eyisebenzisa ngalo nyaka ka 2020 and we have no records of the conversation between yourself and Kenneth Hadebe when you were requesting him to make the pointing out. Uh, what type of recordings are not? FC Council can terrify. Uh, it, it's recorded. I have it in my diary and it's, it's recorded in statements to say there was such a discussion. I'm not sure what, what, what more Council is asking me, my lord. I, I think you were using telephone. Am I correct? Yes, I was, my lord. Utige sine record la iguti wena waogate ukuluma nabo labo bantu uyabuza uprikati uguti mthambe maunga nkakisela ukuluma nga ipi record uti umeli kogate useven sa uti nwangisho uti ye. Yes, then I'm referring to that conversation, uh, Brigadi. I think you'll understand better because you are the investigating officer. I'm referring to that conversation that was made between one handset to another handset that we do not have the content of the conversation what was said by you to Kenneth Hardy no we, well, we don't have it in the docket manual, but I'm not aware okay. of the requirements that such conversations must be <coughs> because you must you must talk five those things you apply I'm not I'm not aware that that was supposed to be now requested and in any event my lord what we're going to have is actually um, the linkages that shows that there was a call from my phone to the to Lieutenant Kadere. The actual recording, it's another dilemma. It's, it's actually interception, monitoring. So I'm not sure how was I going to get the exact weight unless, unless both our phones are intercepted. Um, but, but there are regulations to do that. So it's not something you can just take and put on the docket. You, you apply, they are regulated. And they, they are people's rights. I mean, I didn't ask Kenneth Kadere to violate his rights in this instance. I was only asking him to assist if he can with the pointing out, not to infringe his rights to privacy. And I was not aware that I was supposed now to go to his records and draw that communication and intercept his own my lord. I'm, I'm not aware of that really with greatest respect. To Melige Asina Loge Lolo Leon Kulumo E Nibena Yowena no Kenel Hatebe Goba Ayikola Yibutis yes I use wakona no ma such elongayo uti ubrigadi mina loko engwazio uti umaingabe uti nga irekot enjalo kwa melo ufage istrelo uti uzoti nga irekot enjalo kwa tuwa angzangi nbe naso leso strelo uti bengi ngazi uti uzoti nge uti gube na leo rekot ye mkulu mwaya mna ye ngoba mina ngazi uti amalunge lo waki uti umundu unelunge lo uti maga kulume na umunyu umundu Bese uti ina kona lapo benga zanga uguti bewa melege gitonze i record leyo yo penyo penya uguti sikole i record ya leyo kulu. My Lord, can I ask for the short break? The heat is unbearable where I'm standing, my Lord. Just a short break, just to breathe out. What time is it? Six minutes past twelve. Okay, let's come back at half past twelve. Thank you.
Yes. Yes, Mr. Cholo. So it reads as follows, my Lord. It says, My Lord, so after the warning that was given to him in terms of section 35, I established as to what he wants to do. It was there, my Lord, that he is prepared to talk to me without any attorney any attain and he was or he did not choose the right to remain silent my lord and he did not elect to remain silent rather my lord he um i can't see it's it says interview yes okay thank you man funda lana kupa liwe uguti ngemba kuguti akulu ngikulume na ye ye na uye washo uguti ukuna ukubega na ukuluma Loko bebukaza uguti uke tege uguti ayege lelia lungelo loguti atule. This is accused number two you were referring to as him here, am I correct? No, I'll have to go back and check my notes. Oh, okay, maybe. Yeah, but, yeah, I, I can't say from just from, by reading this paragraph, I can't say this relates to accused number two or oh, one. I'll have to look at the line of question. Let's start uh, on line number eight. Eight. Eight, line number eight on the same page. You see, under Mr. Baloy. Mm. Yes, just before we get to that, what led to you going to Carltonville on the 18th of June, 2020? Yes. Can you recall now? This is the incident which took place on the 18th and the state was asking you regarding the incident that took place on the 18th yes. of June 2022. Yes, 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 I do recall my lot. Yebo nya kumbulu kuti loku bekate kubuzu wa umshushisi engbuza ngotaba ilenza gelenge 18 zika June 2020. And your response, if I can also read it into the record so that you can refresh your memory. It was the fact that Sergeant Mohane informed me that they will be going there for other investigations, but also in relation to certain alibi that he may have given them in relation to this matter. By yeah. he, I think you meant accused number two. That's correct, my lord, I do recall that. Utiebo nge akumbula ye ngoba la utaza kona kukuluma usajan mukhane ebegate eti baya kona bayo penya ngelinye ngogunye obese umsolo eba chele kona Brigadier, you yourself in your own words, in line number 15, you are referring to <coughs> warnings. Line number 15, my lord. So after the warning that was given to him in terms of section 35, you see that line? Yes, I do. Yes. And all the paragraph, the content of the paragraph were in the accused also made a selection of choice. Am I correct if I read this paragraph? No, no, no. Where do I refer to your paragraph, my Lord? I see, because uh, uh, that's not what I see. I see. My, my response says, my Lord, so after the warning that I, that, that was given to him in terms of section 35, I established as to what he wants to do. It was there, my Lord, that he is prepared to talk to me without an attorney and he was, or he did not choose the right to remain silent. My Lord, he did not elect to remain silent, rather, and then there was intervention. So um, okay. I don't see anything that refers to paragraph of warnings here. No, don't worry, I'll take you step by step, Brigadier. Don't rush. I'm um, on line number 18, or maybe let's start 17. It says, it was clear, my Lord, that he is prepared to talk to me without an attorney, and he was, he did not choose 
the right to remain silent. Those are the two choices that were made by the accused. Yes, we yes. agree, my lady. Yebo ukete umsolo ukete ukulma nami enye na meli futi waketa no guti anga tuli. I'm still going back to the same format that we introduced when I started the cross-examination. The choice, it's a constitutional right that was chosen by the accused. That one of electing to talk to you without an attorney. No. That's the choice that was made by the accused. Then my question <coughs> is, from this evidence that you testified <coughs> about, was this the election made by accused number two recorded? No, my lord, I dealt with this aspect, really, because you get formal and informal interview. There has never been a situation when police officers question somebody they will start writing a warning statement or a warning form. There was an interview in terms of section 35 where his rights were made, were read to him. He made it, he made response, which have summarized. When you talk about rights, my, my lord, even when people are arrested on daily basis on the street, no way do police officers start write, writing warning statements. They will give them their rights, take them into custody, and then the formality starts there. That's what I've explained over and over again. There is no situation. This is nothing unique. That Can you allow is, interpretation, please? I, I will. Let me. I'm almost done. There is no way, my lord, where I've never seen an instance. Personally, in my what almost eight years in the police, I've never embarked on a situation where I go and arrest the person, and I'm already sitting with a notice of rights where I must record what I'm telling him and the warning statement. I've never seen one doing that, and definitely I've never done that. Okay. That's not how it's done, my lord, in the police. And the gas in me now is poisoning. You born a poison, and no ma, Emma Langen, J. Maguenzagana, and my poison, Libera Sebenza. You born a poison, Umali Bopa, Umunduna, Semkaque, Bese, Lipala, Pansy, Lamalunga, the Lawa, as Kulmanga, or Ka, Amalungelo, Aye, a Kazwe, a Badwe, Pansy, Uma, Sebenzagala, Se Umundu, a Pagati, a poison, no ma, a Pagati, a police page. Kodwa emka kwe ninge umasi hamba asi hambi sipete le nwati le ebizwa pete le zi warning statement le ebu palwa kona amalunge lo pete bese ebu palwa naked men agaze kwa enze ka utu prikati usega ne minyaga mshaombe enga linga nana amashuma matatu elibede sespo ise mkodwa logo aga kumbu li wenza ka. Fera mo ma lot, sorry concern, fera mo ma lot, it should be clear that my interaction with both accused one and two when one was, try was trying to establish um, as to whether they are prepared to make these confessions or when they were talking to me to say, you know, they want to make this confession and obviously meeting the requirements. That was a preliminary stage. The formality, which I think is what the questions of counsel constantly goes there, lies with the officers who documented the confessions. Those are the relevant people who formally took the confessions. Fortige mina umangi kuluma na baso lwa wokum swalum manga lelo gala no esbin ngales was cutting gisa kuluma na bu bebunye nando epa lwayo abantu abapa lide yi laba egu ti baye bayo kunyuka mubo kula ygu ti bonake baye bapala pat. Thank you, Brigadier, for that. But all I wanted to hear from you is whether the election of choice that was made by the accused was recorded. It's clear that it was not recorded. Let's, let's stop it there. No. It's no. fine. No, record it where, my lord, because I've explained to counsel, because when, when counsel says it's not recorded, it's not true. I've indicated various documents where I've made reference of this. The only document where she and I are on the same page is that this 3M she referred me to was not used. If the question is in relation to that, Yes, it was not used, and I gave reason as to why. But to say it was not recorded because it's a general statement, then that is incorrect. Uma uti uma umeli eti aguzani bupa luenda wo le luendo umang umsolo aiketi le uti aglona ikoni so prekati ngo ba ngi pali le futi ne statement ngi zenzi le me na no meli si avumela na wo gunye o gunye asi avumela. And furthermore, on the same paragraph, which is between page, line number 15 to line number 20, 
we are also referring to the warning that was given to him in terms of section 35. You see that? Yes, I Line number 15 and 16. Yes, I'm seeing it, my lord. Okay. Wh which rights <coughs> are you referring to in terms of section 35 then? Which warnings? Because we are saying the warning that was given to him in terms of section 35. Which warnings? A right to remain silent, um, a right not to give um, certain criminal evidence, the consequences of doing such, the right to an attorney, the right to have one appointed on his behalf if he cannot afford one, um, um, a right not to be compelled to make admissions or confessions, a right to be detained um, in an environment that is suitable with the uh, human condition, and a right to challenge the legality of his arrest if he sees that it's unlawful and to be discharged from such detention. If the law says detects my lot. Ama ki amalunya do nabu gate umkazela nao um sol and jungle ba u show guti ubogate umkazela malunya do uting him kazela malunya do good hangaba no me malunya do guti at who the anga kulumiz into is not an assez guti zimfaga inking in nune lunya loguti angate abuze noma a tele uguas uguti ubo shelwe in forty yena angahle lokho akulandelisise futhi unelunye lokuthi abe nomeli unelunye lokuthi nokuthi aze azi nokuthi kahle kahle kwenza kalani umkhazisele obrigadie uthi wonke amalungelo wakhe ukuya ngomthetho sesekela and there is no proof that those rights were explained to the accused because there is no document recorded for the interview that these are the rights that were explained by myself to the accused and I signed and the accused signed to confirm or to acknowledge that the rights have been explained to him. Accused number two. Yeah, my Lord, with greatest respect, I've answered cancel, cancel on this part many times. In the diary that I documented, and I refer to this document, it is clearly indicated that section 35, section constitutional rights were given to the accused. And I've explained over and over again, my Lord, that the formality, it's a procedure, it's not my doing. The formality of SAP 14A exists in the holding cells. Every police officer who arrests and detains people, they will only issue the notice of rights formally in the holding cells, and that is the only document where the person who gives the rights will sign and the accused will also sign. There is no prescribed document that the ACPS give to members to go and issue on the street and people signed as and when they are arrested. Uh, it's a 14A, SAP 14A, which you find in the holding cells. If the insinuation is that there should have been a document that is signed when he was interviewed here, my Lord, there is no such document that exists or prescribed by the police. We have been to Meli Uti, Lamalunga, Luxuguti, Abuko, Nayuguti, Aywa, Palwako, Guyawa, Palwako, Na Uti, U, Brigadier. Mina ngi api nda ngi ti loko besi sengi kishilo Uguti asihambi sipete lea nwati E ya malunge lofuti lea nwati Ehu alwaguyo Mina ngi ngi ti loko kugia yekwe mzege Umase umundu esemase lini Besi gula yuguti ya palwa besi ya sayenwa Yonke indo ebegate atazole yona nga malunge loa Ok Thank you, Brigadier. Do you agree with me, Brigadier, that at that time when you had this interview with accused number two, he was a suspect? Yes, he was a suspect, the person of interest in relation to this matter, I do agree. We have Uma Uguti, Ngales Kati, Ukuluma, Nom Solwa, West Bini, Wauga, Waiga, the Esase, Um Solwa, Enga Gabi, Um Manga, Lerwa Uti, Yebo, Yafu. And the form which I've referred to earlier on, which is uh, SAP S3M, says it must be completed when the, where, whether the interview is between the suspect, the suspect or an accused person. No, that's not what it says, my lord. That's absolutely not correct. That's not what this form says. And I, and I would like to read it, my lord, so that I'm not seen to be arguing with counsel. Paragraph 1, subsection A, says the station commander must consult with the prosecutor on circumstances in which the prosecutor requires that a warning statement of a suspect be obtained. That's the essence of it. There was no directive from me by the prosecutor to say, go and interview this person. The second line on the same paragraph that we are reading, it says, this statement must be completed every time the suspect is interviewed, irrespective of whether the suspect has been arrested or not. The same paragraph. 
Yes, but my lord, it is a flow of information. <laughs> Council wants to select. It is you start in one. That's why they tell you that before you get to number two, these are the directives. There must be combination between NPA and the police. Then you flow going down. That's why it tells you, even if you have to interview this person ten times, as long as there's a directive by NPA, then you document it. In my situation, there was no directive by NPA. So, and, and I did indicate, my lord, that it's a warning form, which is not the only form where warning statements are taken. Pindal Taza Upegadi Lendo Begai Taze Exeni Namsan Jokuti Uma Bune Buno Lazi, Noma Buno Buno Guti, Abashushi, Bach Elebona, Ugut Hamban Yobuza, Lomundu Imibuzo, Loko, Yindo Eguti, Ia Ibalu, Norma Nesmiskati, Aibalwa, Jemma Babega Tazile, Uguti Axilona Lodwa. Lady Pepper, a good Tilia search in this one, Uma Mundu, a son of Mibuzo, Meli Uti, Langa Pants, Gutua, Um Solwa, Mopina Mopi Guamele, Uma Ekugu, a son of Mibuzo, Kupale Pants, Uti Loco, Yindo Eguti, Ilande, Langambagale, Sebengi Fundile, Guamele, Silande, Lele Yonke, Imiteto, Gamunye, Gamu. Thank you, Brigadier. Can you just turn the page on the same document? Um, turn, turn the page. Which document? The, the warning statement. The warning statement. You are a member of the SAPS. You can't distance yourself from warning, knowing the warning statement. It's a warning statement that is in front of you. I'm asking you to turn the page. My Lord, is a good place, my Lord. There is a page if, if a where witness tries where to understand, counsel is dealing with two documents at the same time. If the witness tries to get clarity, he's owed the courtesy of you know being so directed without the type of utterances that are being directed to the witness. My Lord, my Lord the state is not, is not correct, my Lord. With the witness, we are on the same page. We are dealing with the warning statement. We have been reading, rereading into the record, paragraph one. We are on the warning statement. There is no confusion there. We are not on the transcript. We are on the warning statement. My, my Lord, I, I disagree. The question arose from me because we are not on the same page with cancer. That's why I asked it which document is referring to. So we are not in the same page. Otherwise, I was not going to ask the question. Okay. No problem. Let's continue. I'm, I'm in this document. Maybe you'll understand it if you see it. No, it's sufficient to say a warning statement, my Lord. Yes. I understand. That's the document I'm referring to. Prescribed by SAPS, where you are working I just ask you to turn the page because this document is not numbered, but after the certificate by interpreter, which is paragraph three, if you turn that page, you find this page. We say it's paragraph what, what? What is the number in terms of the paragraph? No, there is no number here. It says statements regarding interview with suspect. It's written in in capital letters. So. Okay, to cut message short, let me. This one. My Lord, can I just hand this into the witness so that you can see? This is the page I'm referring to. You can have a look and return it. Yes, no, it's the same it? page. It's the okay. same page, yes. I'll ask you, uh, Brigadier, to read it into the record, what is written there in capital letters, not the, the whole document. South African police station case number, and what is written there? State, statement regarding interview with suspect. Okay, thank you. Should I read? No, that's all I wanted. Okay. Let's lay in what the AUT Ikulumanga must statement Uma Gu Buzwa Um Solwa. You you had indicated that when you interviewed accused number two, he indicated that he did not want to appoint a legal representative. Yes. Yes. Okay. So it means he was not legally represented on the 18th and also on the 19th. 
Yes, that's I'm aware of that, my lord. Okay. Ute uma ukulima nomsolo esbini na uye wati ubegate enga fun enga face uguba nomeli o kazo guti ngi 18 na ngi 19 wa yagate enga na meli ti ebo ikwenes. Okay. When did you become aware that the accused number two was represented by Mr. Mjia? On the 23rd of June, 2020, my lord. Was any in the Ogoti um Mangalelo is being a Ubegate, a Melo, um Melu, um Giaco, Utinga twenty three, Ziga June twenty twenty. Okay, where? Where he was detained in the holding cells, my lord. I think it's Victoria and North of Mort, my lord. It's documented in my diary, my lord, which I gave to the defense. Was a Gupi Uti la um solo, I got a Boshwe corner, a Victoria North, Noma, a Mort. Yeah, Mr. Gininda is a senior member of the SAPS. You have given the information to the defense, but the information given to the defense cannot just testify for itself. You are here to testify. No, but I testified about it. I let this evidence in my evidence in chief, my lord, and, and, and Mr. Mgomuzi asked me about it. So I'm repeating myself over and over again on what I was asked by, by the defense uh, counsel for one and two. It's a repetition of what was put to me by Mr. Mgomuzi after I let this evidence in evidence in chief. If I recall, my lord, there was even a time where the court ordered that all defense counsel must actually peruse the, 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 the diary physically before copies were made. Subsequent to that, when because I was dealing with that part in my evidence in chief, I dealt with it with Mr. Mgomazulu. Now I'm repeating the same thing. So it's not the first time I'm saying this, my lord. Lento nge shoyo ankalu gui sho ngoba nge nga buzo umeli umgomazulu engbuza imi buzo ngayo lenda baye dayari futi inkanto die yati abameli babone le dayari ugutikupa lweni yinto eguti ibeisege ya tazwa was it your first time to see or to meet with uh, Mr. Mjiako on that day? Yes, it was. I didn't know him from, from time memorial. I think that was the first time for me, my lord, to see him. Bokala Uklangana Num Numza Num Jiako Nalelo Langa Uti Yabo Bengala. Brigadier, you'll answer, you'll answer this question if you know. Do you know that Mjiako has been the mem a member of the SAPS up until 2017? No, 2016, I, 2016, sorry. No, I, I wouldn't know, my lord. You don't know that? No, I wouldn't know. We didn't discuss that. We are not acquainted, um, and I never worked with him. If he was in the police, I certainly didn't come across him or interacted with him in any matter for that matter. And in this matter, when you were in... Sorry. sorry. You may proceed. Okay. In this matter, when you... You were investigating this matter. You testified that you were working with the Crime Intelligence Unit. Am I correct? I said it was, yes, it was driven, crime intelligence driven operation. So there was intelligence gathering that was present. That's correct, my lord. Was in our Uti Umjiako, Ugawa, Poisa, and 2016, not Tabengingazi, Uti Angaz and Kumena, Yengalo, Hobeskat, Singasi, Singasobenang, and Galo, Tinas, Sanyanenje. Ezo mela umsolo wesbini futi ute na lelita la leli bekate kuna ba peni abango tuwe pesha uti yebo leli lolo peni kuslangi ne bekate kuna ba peni abango tuwe pesha futi. And Mjiako was working in the unit of crime intelligence unit. You didn't know that. No, I didn't know, my lord. As I said, and I'm repeating it um, without fear of contradiction, my lord, I've never worked with him. If he was in the police, I've never come across him. That was my first time, my lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Please, my lord. My learned friend is putting it as a fact. Uh, I, I don't know what the basis of, uh, you know, putting it so s strongly or elevating this to a fact that Mr. Miyako work for crime intelligence. Uh, if my learned friend can perhaps lay the basis for um, that submission. Thank you, my lord. Can I proceed to the next question, my lord? Lastly, Brigadier, have you ever been accused in your years of service? Have you ever been accused of forcing people to confess and to make statements? 
Thank you. Please, my lord, uh, we submit that that question is inadmissible. It's, it's character evidence. And it, it's As a court business, it's my lord, those are my submissions. <laughs> Thank you. Uthu seka kwa dilege umeli ububuza uprikadie imibuza. Any re exam? Yes. Uh, indeed, my lord. Brigadier Mr. Mgomazul, on behalf of uh, accused number one and two, put it to you that there is now regarding the events of the 19th of June 2020, uh, he put it to you that. Perhaps let's deal with the events of the 24th of June 2020. Um, after the statement was made to a magistrate, he put it to that after the alleged confession on the 24th of June 2020, accused number two was taken to an industrial area near Jamiston where he was assaulted and he bled and blood stains spilled on the confession documents and he further put it to that the documents that accused number two signed must have some blood stains now if i can request you to take out the confession exhibit jj that Accused yes. number two made to a magistrate and just page by page just to show it to the court and court personnel as to whether there's any evidence of blood stains on the document. Indeed, my Sorry, Lord. my Lord, may I just correct the state in terms of what I, what I actually initially put to the presiding officer to say the document... You put it to me? No, the presiding officer, Mrs. I see. That was put as a version of accused number two. Was that the document that uh, Mrs. Cronier that she was in possession of is not the same document because this, the document that accused number two alleges that when he signed the document, he was bleeding and blood stains. The blood uh, uh, spilled on the on the pages. It was put straightforward to say that document is not the same document. So there are two documents signed. Then apparently, uh, according wait, 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 to wait, the by inference of logic, yeah. if you are saying the one which Mrs. Kondje had, it was signed. It was not signed. It was signed at the dump there, was it not? My Lord. No, no, let's, let's, let's recapitulate the evidence. Yes. So you're saying Mrs. Kronjian never signed as a, a, as a justice of the peace? No, no. Let me just uh, remind the court about okay. the evidence of and what was put to Mrs. Kronjian. Okay, fine. What accused number two signed is the performer of that document, but not the statement. And when it was, it was put to her that that document you are in possession of must have been seen by stains because accused number two bled when he signed that, that yeah, document. Yeah, that, that, I that understand, document. Sorry, I understand you well. Yes. The imputation is that that document was signed outside of the, the personal office. presence of Ms. Kronji, is that not so? Yes, that's correct. I understand English very well. Thank you. Very and that follows then that when it was signed, wherever you say it was signed, it must have blood stains. That's correct. That's it. So yes. you can pursue that because unless you're saying to me there are two sets of performer forms or two sets of no, of uh, what, no, my If there's one document, it's entitled to to revisit that, Mr. Baloy. As a court, this uh, brigadier, if you can just show the document page by page 
to the court in court personnel as whether there's any evidence of blood stains on it. My Lord, so this is this is page one um, of, of, of the form, so there's no form, there's no blood stain. It's the second page, there's also no blood stain or any stain whatsoever, my Lord. Third page, same situation, no blood stain. <coughs> Fourth page, my lord, no blood stain or any marks whatsoever. Next page, my lord, there's also no blood stain. The next page as well, my lord, it's the same situation, no blood stains. Page after that, my lord, with the same situation, there's no blood stain. <coughs> the next page after that, my lord, same situation, there are no blood stains. Page that follows that, um, and that's a certificate by the interpreter. There's no black stain, my lord. Copies of the IDs of the officials who were there. No black stain, my lord. The next one as well. There are no black stains. The third one is well of the officials with the day stamp of the court. There are no black stains. The the, the actual. Uh, document the statement, my lord. Here is it. There are no blood stains on it. The next page of the statement, there are no blood stains. Um, third page of the document, my lord, it doesn't contain any blood stains as well. Fourth page of the statement um, does not contain any blood stain. Fifth page of the statement, my lord, by at least two, does not contain any blood stain. And the seventh page document, which is the last one, um, also does not contain any blood stains, my lord, or any stains, my lord, that cannot be explained. Utum Shushi Suya Kumbulu, what um, Meli Gam Mangalolo has been, Uya Wagbuza, Galicia statement, less Um Mangalolo has been, Ewachi, Uya Wachawa, Naiguchi. Itemaga saina guye gwa kapaza lega ikazi Gule si statement ile siyana Le si ebeskate si gumanji Uti age ubonise inkantolo pindu ubonise na wongu mundu Ola inkantolo kuti Ngembela leo ngwati leo ikona ena logo kapaza lega guye kazi Uya pesha uprikatiri uya bonisa uti guo wonke Ama pepa la awa pete agu kuna kubona ganisa Ukapaza lega guye kazi Please, will this be an appropriate time to take the long adjournment? Oh, okay. 11 past 1. What's the time now? 11, 11 minutes past 1. Oh, okay. Come back at 2. What's it called? So we are about 2 o'clock. All right. On the 19th of June 2020, um, at ATMs that were no longer working, that you took out a document. And that that document was already uh, completed. The statement was already made that certain pages thereof were not stemmed and were eventually stemmed at Moroka police station that accused number two was forced to put his thumbprint on those pages. Now, the question is this, how many pages does the statement that accused number two made before Lieutenant Colonel Rapadu on the 19th of June 2020 consist of? So, 
It, the, the pro forma, my lord, consists consists of six pages, and the statement itself is two pages, my lord. So it's an eight-page document. The statement is less. Ebati ngales katu ufiga na paya na bu number eight yema bega te enga sebenzi. Lesso statement is lesso. Sinama page anga ki uti inwati le etwa liswa nga pamgo guti kubena lesso statement. Yona inama page a is too far. Bese ama page we statement so na mwa so ama page ama b. Now, Brigadier, the suggestion here is that you came with the with the document, the the, the um, two page document um, of a version that was concocted. No, but that's not true, my lord. Uh, as I indicated earlier, that I only met Colonel Rapadu a day or two, two days later in at Enadil ACPS, where he gave me this document, my lord, and, and subsequently his statement. That was the first time I actually laid eyes on him, other than talking to him on the phone. So I never met him with this form or came with any form in any way, uh, whether it be in the police station itself or the ATM area they're referring to. Manje, you Tiwa. When I was in a what the AOT be that the father is into Egna season or the cow brigadier Yena Uye what what are the Madi Lego Lieutenant Kenan Rapadu Eslangana Naye as poison Ubega de Kalage Uslangana Naye as poison Gales was Kati a panda go to Wayaga de Kulmenae of the way. Now, Mr. Mgumazulu further put it to that. Accused number two was forced to put a thumbprint on each of those pages that uh, you mentioned, those eight pages or so. <coughs> my, my Look, what? Yes. Masa, masa, yes. yes. Yeah. So, my lord, I was not there, like I said. What, what I received from Lieutenant Colonel Rapadu was a statement, uh, the performer together with this attachment, complete, not in pieces, a day or two days <coughs> later when I met him for the first time. There was no indication that two sets of documents were given. I got one set from him, but prior to that, I have not come across him at any, any, any time of my life, my life. Njengo bagutiwa nginiwe ama pepa atlugi le ka aglo nkani songo siyankantolo ngoba minangitole ama pepa ebegate etlange ne kusuga huye ule tenen kenen rapadu bengate ngikala no klanga nanae futi nala ama pepa Except for the version about the thumbprints, nothing was put to you regarding the signature. Is the document signed? Yes, it is signed, my lord, by um, by by the colonel, it's a, um, colonel Rapadu and uh, the deponent, which is supposed to be um, accused too, because it's a signature next to his thumbprint, my lord. Manje ye ngapande kwa lestupa e umanga lelo esbini ati yena upote iwe uguti asbege kule sa statement. Gusa iniwe na uti yebo gusa iniwe gusa ine ukenel rapadu nalo mundo begate e kuluma le sa statement di ebu umanga lelo esbini. On which pages? So on all pages, my lord. Sign the same page in other words from page 1 to page 8. It's a thumbprint. Next to it, there's a signature. Kenneth Rapadu also signed. So you see that from page one right up to the last page. There's no break of sequence, my lord. It's a flow of events. Wonke ama page asaini we forty unes to pa es begi we konala. Now it was put to you regarding the <coughs> events of the 21st of June 2020, it was put to you that you met accused number two at Primrose Police Station, that you apologized to him. Sir, a point of correction. Uh, my lord, I've made a correction when the witness was still testifying. Uh, after I took uh, proper instruction, I corrected myself to mean uh, Pretoria North. North oh, so you are trying to apologize at Pretoria North Police Station? Hey, that's correct. Not yes, Mr. Well, <coughs> um, uh, I don't remember that correction, but be that, I remember it. Be, be that as it may, 
Um, it was put to you that you approach the accused now according to what <coughs> Mr. Mgumizulu says at Petura North Police Station on the 21st of June 2020 that you apologize to him for having uh, been assaulted, that is now for accused number two having been assaulted and that you offered him three million rand. So my lord, my response is that that is not correct yes. because the first part, the confession was already made on the 19th. That is, that is the first part of this. There was a confession. My first engagement with the accused, my lord, accused two, was on the 18th where there was clear indication of his uh, confession. <coughs> Subsequent to that, on the 19th, a formal confession was made by him. So that's, that's the flow of events, my lord. Secondly, I mean, thirdly, my apologies, my lord. On, that, on the 19th, uh, in the evening, subsequent to the docket of provision of ammunition being opened, he was charged in booking, transferred to Primrose, not Victoria North. The OBs, we've read those OB, my lord, they're available, we've shown them to the defense. From Booking, my lord, he was never taken to Victoria North. There are entries that shows that he was detained in Primrose Police Station on the 20th in the morning hours by Sergeant Mokani. The following day, which is now the 21st, he was still in Primrose and Sergeant Mokani formally charged him on the OB. There's also an entry that has been disclosed to the defense. I was not there. There's an entry that shows that Sergeant Mokani at Primrose, not Victoria North, not charged him for the Puking case. And subsequently, on the 22nd, he appeared for the first time in Puking um, uh, Magistrate Court. So I was not there, my lord, and there was no such offer uh, made by me. Like I said, my lord, it's unethical, it is unlawful. I don't even know, I can't even comprehend the reason why would you offer a suspect that money. He confessed, my lord. Even if he did not confess, that would have been his right to remain silent. There is no way. Um, that I even had access to that money in terms of the police budget in any event. But, but even if it was there, my lord, it's something that is unethical, unlawful, and something that I will never, never, never do. I've heard stories, my lord, uh, of, of, of um, officials and government officials um, being accused of, 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 of corruption. In other words, the corruptor being perhaps the member of the public. This is the first in my whole career where I've had a police officer like us offering money to an accused of that magnitude. I'm shocked, my lord, but it is not true. That is the essence of it. So are you saying, sorry, sorry, you're saying the traffic is the other way? It is the other way, my lord. And the statistics of, of corruption, even if you look at the Zondo Commission, if you look at the crime states that we have as the police, it's the other way. It's the, it's the service providers, mm -hmm. it's the members of the public who are bribing government officials, ACPS officials. Um, uh, that's why we have, I'm sitting with matters with the such, 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 such cases. I have never, I'm talking about me, my lord, seen a special <coughs> amount of money where police officers, investigators are offering money to an accused who has already confessed. I, I don't know what, 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 what is the purpose. He has already confessed, he implicated his co accused and his willingness to, to cooperate. Subsequent to that, my lord, he does indeed cooperate with us. And then he goes and make the, 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 the confession to the magistrate. So I. I yes. I don't know my lord. Sergeant Mohan, we are on to Samakala, why of Vela Epuking, Futi Uti Agazanga Yena, Ayo Colisa, Yenda Bayok Shawa Gugam Mangalela, Yena Agazanga Ayaz in the Bayok Shawa Mangalela Futi, Nalul Taba Leman, Letter Million Uti Ka, Yena Yakalu Yizwa, Gasegase, Wazi Iguti Guno Guti Abantu. Ube Ibona Aba Fisa Ubnega Amapoisa Imad, Ayo Guti Amapoisa. And Nigge about the money. Foot begs over Yenis at so much after Nigga Untans, Imali, Gemba go to Untans, Bessie, Yena, 
ngokuwa ke esega kunyuluji de sega kaze nukuti ye na uzumisele nukuti angasebe nsana na bama poesa sega chele nukuti abobani abanda yukutiba dale indima gule litala futi ye na ye uya kaza uti aigazi ya enzega ngege ye enzege ayiko mt20 futi na ye ngege ayifume when did we hear about this allegation for the first time for the first time, it was when I took um, counsel for accused to put it to me. It was the first time. It was never ever said to me, my lord. And that was, I think, on the last day of his uh, cross examination, my lord. Last week, I think, his last day. That was the first time I heard about it, my lord. Ukale ni nuguzo adolotaba, uti ukale ukuluzo ako kala. Ngale skati umeli kambanga lelo esbini engi buza imi buzo nja kabanga uti vigi el tolile. Well, still on the subject that the offer was, according to the question that was put by Mr. Mgonzulu, made on the 21st of June 2020, I just want to show you Exhibit QQ. Um, it's already in record, but where was the accused detained? Firstly, on Saturday, the 20th. He was detained at Primrose SAPS, my lord. By Sergeant Mohani, sorry. Mangalelwa yena waika tekinwe epi nge 20 uti beka tekinwe e Primrose o Sergeant Mohani. And what is the relevant entry? So it's the, the, the relevant entry, my lord, it's 713 and the time of detention it's 0040. In other words, my lord, 22 1 in the morning. La ye buye kwa palwa kona mizuzu ema shuma mabini nga pambwe hora lokala ndatabusa Kula kwa palwa ye ukutumsolwa ye na uyafa kwa ye espoiseni Sase primrose Then my lord, on the 21st, um, it's 21 June 2020 the, the, the entry there is 2029 it says suspect charged by Sergeant Mohane. That is now in relation to this um, uh, uh, the, the, the Pukeng case 118 of 6 2020. This that Sergeant Mohane who charged him at Primrose Police Station. And subsequent to that, my lord, in the morning of the 22nd, he was then booked out from Primrose Police Station to Pukeng. Nowhere was he ever at uh, Pretoria North on those days from the 19th to the 22nd, my lord. Bese ye footing nge son to e twenty one ziga june twenty twenty gula y guti um sol wa yena wa gate e kwana la paya e primrose wa y si wa yem um sombuluko enkandolo e ya se pukein. And the relevant entry my lord in so far as the booking out when Sergeant Mohane was taking him to court, it was two zero six five and the time was O seven fifteen. That's when Sergeant Mohane booked out accused two to Pukeng uh, Magistrate Court. Futi gegula iguti uye wapala ge o Sergeant Mohane iskati begui mizuzu e ishu menantano ngemba kwe hora le sikombisa eguseni ngale iskati ekipa umsolo amisa eskoise e e e engandolo yase Pukeng. And the date my lord is the 22nd of June. 2020. That's when he was taken to Pukeng Magistrate Court. Ilanga yebegu yi when the truth got June gomsombo no kong and skati emisa kwa manji wasa Pukeng. Thank you, Brick. Then on Friday when we were listening to the audio, uh, towards the end on the 5th of March 2021, Mr. Nkwana, who had just taken over the defense of accused number two, and it was also appearing for accused number three. And it was also put in record yesterday when the transcripts were made available. Um, there was an allegation that accused number two and three uh, are complaining of assaults. Yes. Um, was there any action taken regarding that complaint? Yes, indeed, my lord. So I will start back in 2021. Um, subsequent to that, my lord, I requested uh, the facts, the, rather the explanation or the, uh, should I say, maybe the statement, my lord, or, or, or the information regarding the alleged offense 
uh, of, of, of torture in relation to accused number two and number three. Because my recollection, those were the people, according to Mr. Nkwane, who claimed, and accused number two said it himself. Now, that report never came, my lord. So, but what I then did, I coordinated with the Department of Correctional Services to check in their registers and obviously provide such uh, information in writing if there are any assault reported. Because at that time, my Lord, accused two was detained at the Department of Correctional Services, not at the police station in Phuket. That's where he came from, and then he came to court. When he was received in the court books on that day, the 5th of um, March 2021, there was no reporting of assault in the court cells itself, which is the same situation which accused number three. Now, I made those inquiries, my lord, they were negative. In other words, there was no such reporting, both from the police and the DCS. Then, my lord, subsequent, frustrating to where we are, um, after this, after we listened to the, to, the, to, the, to the recordings of those days, my lord, I embarked on the same exercise again. I spoke to the head of the center, the current head of the center in CIMEX, where accused three is detained, and also the head of the center where accused two was detained at that time. Both disposed affidavits, signed affidavit and commission that there was no such reports of assault in their books and that was brought to their attention. Actually accused the, the head of the center for accused for CMEX prison, he even says he went, and that is now the previous Saturday, to even interview accused number three and said there's this allegation in court. Were you ever assaulted? And that was denied. That is going to be hearsay. Yes. 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 You mentioned that you obtained the affidavits, yes. and, and we can put on record that these affidavits have been made available to the defense. Yes, they are made available, my lord. That clearly states that there was no assault reported okay. then in 20, in, in, on the 5th of March 2020. Thank you. And, the, sorry, and the OB for the cells, my lord, is also available, which we've made available to the defense. That shows that even in the court registers itself, on that specifically, there was no entry of assault. Okay. Umeli unkwa ne uye wakuluma enkantolo ubuti abamanga ne lo amanga ne lo westbini no westart buana bati bashaiwe utu prigatiri injengo ba deka te gula ne lo nango le stano uye wachata inya telo yena ubuti ayo shona noma ayo kuluma na lava abapete amajele la abamanga ne lo basi na lo wase simetu wakuluma na la untanzi eseli kona. Uti baye bapala itatment, uti lezo itatment, uznigida abameli, u lezo itatment, baya piga, buguti ba untazi no 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 manga no lezo itatment, uti baya piga, uti na lezo itatment, lezo zikona e aznigida abameli, la bakudume kona, bapale uguti abazanyo bashawe lamato. And, and just lastly, uh, uh, the during cross-examination by Mr. Mgumezolo, he asked you as to whether you had prior knowledge or your team had prior knowledge of the case docket for Slores 534 6 2020. And your answer was yes. Um, there were previous. Um, <coughs> Sorry, there were persons of interest. We did cold case analysis around them. We approached them. We were aware that they are suspect in the Senzo Mayor case. Now, the qu question is can you clarify if and you put on record the sentence that then is. Peniselani Butelezi um, received. You mentioned that he was convicted on several counts and the sentences imposed on those counts. Um, can you clarify whether this is a separate docket? That is not the docket on which Peniselani Butelezi was sentenced. Whether it's a separate docket from 
Nongoma 1634 of 2018. No, it is the same, my lord. So, so the one that you were sentenced on, it's a Nongoma 163, uh, Dakar of 2018 in March, my lord. That's that's the, that's the matter you were sentenced on, my lord. Okay. <laughs> But, but one should also add, my lord, that that docket was going with various dockets. So it was not just one docket. It's, it's, it's that num case number, the number of dockets. Sergeant Mohane will, will, will know. But, but it, in <coughs> essence, my lord, that Nongoma case is got a condition on that matter. Futige, it in Kwanzele Nongoti, Aksu Uti, Togoto, Elotwa, Eliz Mele, Elawa Nongoma. Guna manya ama dogoto, abega te hamisana na lolelo dogoto, usate mkani uye na onga wazo uwe kaza kangono. Thank you, my lord. Those are the only aspects you wanted to take up with the witness. Okay. Have you ever been to Orlando, sir? Orlando East? Yes, my lord. I've been to Orlando East and West, my lord. Uh, and Orlando West? Outside, my lord. I'm asking this because you say you don't know of any place where there are disused or where there were disused ATM machines. That is correct, my lord. They, they, there's none that I know. I mean, the open field that I can think of in Orlando between East and West, you will think of um, one next to the Orlando Stadium because mm. there's, there's, there's a river there. There's, Squatter yes, Camp. There. Squatter Camp, my lord. But even there, in that vast open space. I have never. I grew up there, like I said, my lord. Mm. I did my first year all the way up to metric and so way to. I have never come across that. Even when I was working, there's no such that I've seen, my lord. Just a dumping place in Orlando. Have you ever seen one? I, I know the one above um, um, Mufulo South. You know, they used to call it Colliard or something like that. I, I, you know, I, 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 I can't recall, my lord. You're I, talking Mufulo South? Yeah, so if you pass me from the side when you use Is that the vocational? Yes, 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 yes. There was one that side. The court was born in Sophia Town, had grew up in Alexander Township. And in 1960, I was, family was transmitted to Deep Kloof. And this judge got married and stayed in Orlando West. So this court has got intimate knowledge about Orlando East, Orlando West, the Polo South, etc., etc. So that's why I want to see. Maybe the gentleman is wrong. There is a dumping place in Orlando. Not that I'm aware of, my lord. That's why I said if you go to vocational rate, my lord, leaving from Mufulo South, coming from White Seat, um, Mufulo South, going up, specifically going to Nansfield, there was a dumping area on the right hand side before you turn to vocational. Rate. In Orlando, my lord, I really have no recollection of that, my lord. Yabuzi ngando lugu tu prigati uyayazi na i Orlando. Prigati uti uyayazi Orlando North, i Orlando West, i Orlando East. Uti ukulele esuwe chunjengo wa sena kazile ukali skoro kona wakata kona. Yena agazo wabona inda wana agula kwa kona ma ATM no mama ATM anga sebezi. Yabuzi ngando lugu ti uyayazi na mshawambe inda wana agula kwa kona na agula kwa kona na. Uti mshawo benga sisika ngeenle se setuze kwe Orlando Stadium kutwa Aguna atwa ama ATM Enye futu ukaza ngale nga se mfulo la iguti Ikona enye ndao na aguna atwa kwa nizibi kutwa uti Aguna atwa ama ATM guyo leo ndao leo Kaza futi no kuti umasiso uyeta uza nga se Nensfield ewa ste Na lako mshawo benga ngaba nesika nga kutwa Aksu kuti gula atwa ama ATM Nga doli ya kaza na yu kuti izanelwe Kona ngale nga siso wetu ya kula ya ya nga si Alexandra ya buya ya shata futi nga siso wetu Inga ndolo ya ya zile ya ndao aksu kuti kutawme Inga ndolo ya ya zile ya kuna nje ukono kuti uprikatiru ya ya zile ya ndao Well, in addition I attended school at Orlando High Chige, Inga ndolo And I played for Orlando Pirates at Orlando So, I'm familiar with it And we used to train in Orlando, towards where it meets deep to yes. the sporting grounds, the blah, blah, blah. Yes. And I was an athlete representing Southern Transvaal in Hedros. Oh. 
880 in a, in a mile. <laughs> okay. No, no, fine. It's just for my curiosity because I don't think it's consequential, that, that thing, concerning me. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, thanks. Are you finished? I, I'm done, my lord. Yes, okay. I'm done. All right. That's a good place. Thank you, Brigadier. So there's one aspect. I said all the councils could address me as to whether a recording, standard recording of a television clip can form part of the record of this court. Are you, are you, are you saying you are abandoning it? That was my understanding that the, 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 After uh, the audio and the transcripts have being supplied, so yes. there's no necessity for that. But they can, I think, speak for themselves. Is that so? That is the position, my lord. Everybody says that is the <coughs> position. Okay, fine. Yeah. May I be excused, my lord? Yes. Okay, thank you. The what? Yes. The witness was is excused. Was it a question that was posed to the witness arising from the court's question? About me playing for under pirates? No, no. The first question <laughs> that was asked. <laughs> <laughs> mm. This question was it, sir? About the ATMs in Orlando. Well, that's why I say he, he's given his evidence about that. I just wanted to understand whether there was a dumping place or not. He says there isn't. You can proper argument about it, no problem. I'm not making a definitive finding to say there, why, no, there are no ATMs. I'm just asking this witness because I'm familiar. I can take judicial notice of that place to say where there could be a dumping place for ATMs. Thank you. Okay. There are no further questions. Okay, yes, Mr. <coughs> That's a good place, my lord. The state calls the next witness is Colonel Sonipu, the witness is not on the witness list, my lord. Colonel Sonipu? Yes. Okay. The witness is going to testify in respect of uh, a new exhibit that we've marked. Exhibit NN1. These are the extracts of the occurrence book at Silverton Police Station for the period 3 July 2020 and 10 July 2020. Uh, it's also going to testify in respect of a cell register. We've marked this exhibit NN in brackets 2. And the witness is also going to refer to national instructions. We've just, for the sake of convenience, we've not included them in the bundle, but we haven't marked those national instructions. We don't think it's necessary to hand them as an exhibit. The councillors have they been given these documents yes, timelessly? Yes, yes they, they were given those documents yesterday, my lord. We are aware of these documents, councillors. So Nisi doesn't know anything about this document. No, they, they, they were all given the bundle yesterday. Mr. Ngumalo, do you know anything about this document? Yes, I've received them yesterday. Thank you. Mr. Ngumalo? Yes, my lord, I think. Mr. Nisi? Yes. You what? We, I received it. Okay, and Mr. Ngumalo, did you receive it? It's received. Okay, thank you. All right. May you swear the witness in there? What the tal from the English? English. Okay. Do you have any objection in taking that No. And if you so swear, do you swear that the evidence you are going to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, nothing else but the truth? If you do, this means your right hand and say, So help me God. So help me God. Witnesses. So in my Lord. Madam Shushi Subiza Omunyo Fagas, Colonel Uswane Pool. 
You are a colonel in the South African police, is that correct? That's correct. Kutiebo u colonel is police in Salaim, South Africa. Where are you attached currently? I'm currently the station commander at Pretoria Moy Police Station. Oh, yeah, station commander at Pretoria Moy Police Station. How many years service do you have in the South African police? 41 years. Can you put your career history on record? Uh, thank you. I was uh, I joined the South African Police Service in 1983 when I went to college. After that, I was placed at Johannesburg Central. At the time, it was called uh, John Foster Square. Just a minute to give the interpreter And after that, in 1986, uh, I was placed at the Regional Commissioner's Office of Johannesburg. Regional Office. And then in 1988, I was transferred to the regional office in uh, Pretoria. In 1992, I became a lieutenant in the South African Police Service and was placed at Bonneboom Port Police Station as Station Commander. In 1992, I was a lieutenant to the Lutheran Police Station as Station Commander. And then uh, in 2003, I was transferred as the Station Commander at Pietras Police Station. In 2003, I was a Station Commander as Pietras Police Station. And then in 2010, I was placed at Kamildrev Police Station as the station commander. In 2010, I was placed as the station commander. So, uh, Colonel, between 2003 and 2010, you were the station commander of Estres Police Station. That's correct. Tiebo, in 2003, in 2010, and that will say yes, the rest. Yes. And then in, uh, from in 2016, I was promoted to the rank of colonel and I was placed at Silverton Police Station as the station commander. In 2016, I was a colonel, a station commander. In which police station is Silverton. Yes, Silverton. Then in 23, I was placed as the station commander of Pretoria Moor Police Station. In 2023, I was placed as the Pretoria North Moor Police Station. So, just uh, how many were, how many years were you the station commander of uh, Silverton Police Station? It was all in all, it was eight, uh, seven years. What did you say? As police and as a silver team, during the station commander, the Minyaga is combis. So, all in all, Colonel Swanepoel, from 1992 until currently, you have been station commander of various police stations. That's correct. In 1992, I was a station commander of the police station at Lugile. Now, can you explain to the court, are the official documents that are kept at the police station? Yes, they are official documents kept at the police station. Yes. yes, what are those documents? Uh, it is all, all documents pertaining to the police station itself. 
it's including the SAPS 10, uh, the occurrence book, where all incidents are reported in. Uh, it just, is just a minute. Then also the SAPS 13 where all exhibits is handed in. And then the SAP 14, that is a cell register where all the detention people that's detained at the police station is captured. Then there's different other registers that are kept, for example, the accident uh, report registers and all the other registers pertaining to policing at the police station. Okay. But for our purposes, we can just confine ourselves to the SAP 10, the occurrence book, and SAP 14, the, the cell register. You have already mentioned that the purpose of the occurrence book is to record the, the, the incident. So what is the procedure when recording such, such incidents? Uh, my Lord, every time a person reports on duty, it is uh, captured in the occurrence book as well as the handing over of the CEC, uh, the Community Service Center programs that's handed over in the occurrence book. If a person is arrested or detained at the police station, it's also captured in the SAPS 10, the occurrence book. Then, uh, if the person is visited in the cells, if the cell visit is conducted, it's also mentioned in the SAP and captured in the SAP 10, the occurrence book. No mundo uma evagache lue esema seliniena. Now, these cell visits, what, what do they consist of? A uh, cell visit is usually done by uh, one or two members. Uh, the members that go and visit the cells make sure that the detainees that's currently in the cell and is written in the SAP 14 are still in the cells and that the cells is in a good condition. Just a minute, just Talk a little bit and give the integrity chance. Gaya Guti Umundu Maesema Selin, Bese Buza, Ipoi, Sa, Lise, Lizo, Tolo, with the Mundo, Sasakona, Naima Selin, Ipoi, Iseli Lelo, Lisa Singentela, E Lungile, Iseli Lelo, Lisa Lungelo, with Mundo, Amasala, Bulo. And then also, if everything is still in order with the pertaining to the uh, detainees in the cells, if there is any injuries or any sicknesses in the cells. Yes. And the, the cell register? The cell register, SAP is 14, uh, it's dealing with the people that's detained at the police station. And it's divided into certain columns, uh, starting with a serial number and then the name and surname of the detainee. As well as the uh, date of arrest, date and time of arrest. 
Upalwe ne skati ne langa Lady Aboshu Ngalu And also the reason for the tension Upalwe ne si zatu uguti uvalelwe ngani Pasipi si zatu As well as the case number pertaining to that specific detainee Upalwe ne ne case number Ea kilo mundu do oboshi And then also the date and time the person uh, was admitted to the cells there's also, there's also space for uh, the notice in terms of the constitution, the notice of rights that's issued to the detainee. Also a space for uh, OB number for the that his next of kin was informed and he had the opportunity to find his next of kin and his legal representative. Goodness, Gava Forty Lai, what he be up along with the Mundulo, we are what one eight to banana, what he am a shina, Utin of Mundu, Norma, who made you. Now you mentioned that there's a space for the notice of rights. Um, what information is entered? regarding the notice of rights in the cell register? Uh, the notice of rights is a serial controlled register that's issued to each police station. That serial notice, of that serial control notice is then issued to each detainee that's detained at the police station. And the serial number thereof, is it documented anyway? It's documented in the SAPS 14, e in, the, in the relevant column. The serial number nayo iapalwa kuyo leo nwagileyo. Yes, and who may make entries in the occurrence book, the SAP 10? It's only the person posted in this uh, CSC, the community service center, or if the cells is separate from the community service center, the person that is posted in the cell complex. Now, are there procedures in place when a person is detained at the cells who is injured? Uh, if there is uh, injuries on a person that's detained, the arresting officer must immediately, before you detain that person, uh, establish if that person needs uh, urgent medical attention, and that person will then be taken for medical treatment. And if the person is uh, brought to the police station and the relief commander or the cell commander finds that the person is injured, he must immediately also arrange for medical treatment. If a person is injured or he's got an illness and he must be treated by a medical practitioner, uh, SAPS 70 is issued for that specific detainee and that goes with the detainee to the relevant a uh, doctor or the medical facility.
The SPS 70 is also a serial controlled register, and that uh, serial number is also written in the SPS 14 in the relevant column. 40, we are the serial number, you tie up all now. Now, if a person comes to the police, sta police station with injuries, will that person be allowed under any conditions to be detained? at the police station? Uh, if a person comes with uh, injuries, he must be either taken by the person arresting him or the relief commander to the nearest facility for treatment. He won't be allowed to be in the cells without treatment. Uma umuntu eza eskwese ni alimele. Uya vunyema na uguti angasla, angasle apawe eskwese ni noma emaseli nuti lo umuntu lo yogwa mele. And then also in uh, Pretoria Court, I can only speak about Pretoria Court, my Lord, uh, is that uh, they don't accept any detainees with injuries at the court as well. Forty in Cantolo, yes, Pretoria, above Vumeli, Abantu, Abasolo, Ubuti, Beze, Balime. Except if that person was treated by a medical practitioner. Is, it, is this practice only confined to, to the Pretoria? I, uh, I don't think so, my lord. I think it's pertaining to every <coughs> magistrate court. Manjele, Linda Valle, Isanga, and Pella Nani, and Gandolos as a Pretoria would attack. Angola, local, was in Gandolon, Gavangut, don't get in Gandolon. And are there any guidelines, any circulars, any instructions that are in place regarding how injured? detainees are uh, dealt with? Everything in the South African Police Service got a, either a national instruction or a standing order. So the rules and regulations pertaining to detainees and uh, every other aspect of the South African Police Service is clearly defined in the national instructions as well as the standing orders. The pertaining to medical treatment, there is a national instruction 8 of 2016 that was issued and that's relevant to all the police stations in the whole of South Africa. Yes. Any other national instruction? Uh, there's also pertaining to uh, people detained at the police station, there's also a national instruction. 11 of 2019. That's talking about treatment of people in custody. As well as the transportation of detainees. I just want to show you a document. Um, can you just identify that document? Now this is a national instruction 8 of 2016 pertaining to medical treatment and hospitalization of persons in police custody. <laughs> Patwa Gabanda Bali made a noma bandu abatinga umyango, 
abaphakathi esiphoyiseni if you can turn to page 2 there can you just put the relevant portions on record what is the procedure in dealing with such detainees uh, thank you my lord uh, paragraph 3 of the national instruction 8 of 2016 medical treatment of a person in police custody upon arrest once a person adult or child has been arrested the arresting member has a legal duty to take care of that of the arrested person and to ensure that medical treatment is provided just Medical treatment is provided to the arrested person whenever necessary. Uh, Paragraph 2 is if the arrested person show any signs that he or she is seriously ill or seriously injured. Uh, irrespective of whether the injury was sustained during the arrest or not, the member concerned must. Exercise his or her discretion and decide whether the person should be taken for medical treatment even before he is taken to the police station. <laughs> If the arrested person, in the opinion of the member concerned, need urgent medical treatment, decide whether the person is fit to be transported by police vehicle or should rather be transported by ambulance. And he, she must then act accordingly. Paragraph 3 says, if a member is in doubt to whether urgent medical treatment uh, attention is needed, he or she should rather take the necessary step to arrange for such treatment. Yes. Is, is it all that? Uh, I, I can also, members must ensure that every arrested person before his or her detention, whether he or she is currently being treated for a me medical condition. If the arrested person is treated with prescription medication or chronic medication or indicates that he or she suffer from a chronic condition, uh, arrangement must be made to collect for the collection of the medication. All the person must be taken to a medical service provider in order for the person to be examined and such medication to be obtained, if applicable. Yes, thank you. Any other relevant questions?
and then also paragraph 4 mm. obtaining medical treatment for a person in custody during detention at the police station Fortige ugu uboni sala na la iguti umuntu uma kutwado wa amakambi wake If a person in custody on arrival at the police station shows any injury uma umuntu uma efika esphoyiseni ebonisa impawu zokulimala appears to be suffering from physical or mental, uh, mental illness yena mhlawumbe ebonisa nokuthi kunalayi ukuthi emzimbeni akazilingalelanga fails to react to sensory stimulation or displays a lack of awareness yena futhi abonise nokuthi akaboni ukuthi kwenzakalani and such person in the opinion of the community service center commander needs medical attention bese kubonwa ukuthi lo muntu loyo uma iphoyisa libona ukuthi udinga ukuyobonana nodokotela for the injury or illness the community service center must ebona kala ukuthi uyobona lelo phoyisa kwamele liyenze isiqinisa kwa sokuthi lo muntu ahambe ayo act as set out in paragraphs 2 and 3 below ahambe ayenza lento ebekade ikhulunywe ku paragraph 2 no 3 lebe sifundile and this also applies if the community service center is in doubt whether medical attention is needed futhi ke nalokho kuyaye kubandakanyiswe uma ingabe lo muntu lo sebenza lapha yana unokungabaza ukuthi lo muntu lo uyakudinga na ukuhlolwa noma akadinga paragraph 2 sub paragraph 2 if a person need medical attention the community service center commander must have the person transported uma ingabe umuntu kubonwa ingathi udinga ukuyohlolwa noma ukuyiswa kudokotela kwamele yena ahanjiswe either by police vehicle or an ambulance hanjiswe amaphoy ngemoto yamaphoyisa noma nge ambulance to the nearest provincial hospital or call the district surgeon i i see where is better as said to the normal gubizo to go tell or said to the if no provincial hospital or district is available call the nearest available appropriate medical service provider uma ingabe singekho isibhedlela eduze lapho kuzawufane ukuthi kubizwe udokotela oyikuthi uya setshenziswa lapha yana The station commander must issue station orders informing the members and the his or her command of which medical service providers to be utilized for such purposes. The station commander yes on akwamele sichaze noma sitshele laba abasebenza ngaphansi kwakhe ukuthi bangasebenzisa yiphi inyanga noma udokotela. These orders must at all times be available in the community service center and must be reviewed on a regular basis to ensure effective administration. Konke lokho kwamele kuhlale kukhona lapha yana la kuvulwa khona amacala futhi amaphoyisa bayenze nesiqinisekiso sokuthi bayalandelela. If urgent medical attention is not required but the community service center commander has determined that medical attention is necessary. Uma ingabe kungadingeki ukuthi umuntu angayisiwa esibedlela noma kudokotela kodwa iphoyisa libona ingathi yadingeka he or she must make the necessary arrangements to have the person examined at the nearest provincial hospital lelo phoyisa kwamele liyenze isiqiniseko sokuthi lo muntu uyathathwa ayohlolwa esibedlela eseduze or if not available by another medical service provider noma uma ingabe singekho isibedlela lapho lo muntu kwamele ayisiwe kudokotela the station commander must ensure uh, ensure that particulars relating to the applicable provincial hospital or other medical service provider o station commander kwamele a yenze isiqiniseko sokuthi abodokotela noma isibedlela that may be utilized for the purpose for this purpose are at all times available in the community service center e banga esinga setshenziswa kwamele sihlale sikhona ulwazi lwakhona lapha yana la kuvulwa amacala it also say uh, paragraph 4 all medical consultations must be conducted in private out of sight and hearing of a member 
unless the medical practitioners specifically request otherwise. Forty Guamele Domundu law are Solway Unga say Ndawen Eguti Abutuananga Abantu, a Panda Boguti Udogotela, a Shonja. Yes, thanks, sir. Could I, any other relevant? Yes, uh, just a paragraph five, my lord, is yes. recording the steps taken. All steps that were taken in regard to medical treatment of a person or child in police custody. Must be fully recorded in the occurrence book. The outcome of any medical examination must similarly be recorded together with the name of the medical service provider. And where the examination had taken place. If more than one entry is required, the different entries must be cross-linked in the occurrence group. The number of the first entry must be recorded in the custody register. So in, in, in other words, uh, Colonel, what you telling the court is that uh, if the person has been injured, steps will be taken to have that person examined and the details thereof must be entered in the occurrence. <coughs> That's correct. <coughs> Yes. And then, uh, paragraph 6, a submission of written report on concerning <coughs> torture to station commander. Paragraph 1. We have found that you want to eliminate the normal SHI way. Now, paragraph 1, ET. Whenever a person in custody is examined by a medical service provider provided by the state, the medical practitioner must be requested to supply the station commander with a written report which must include the following. Any statements made by the person concerned which are relevant to the me medical examination. Statement including the description by the person concerned of his or her state of health and any allegation of torture that he or she may have made. A description of the objective medical findings based on the medical examination. And the conclusions of the medical practitioner in the light of subparagraph A and B. Uh, whenever a complaint regarding torture is made to a medical service provider by a person in police custody, uh, and the medical service provider is of the opinion that the exam examination revealed indications to tend to confirm, confirm such allegations. The community service center commander or station commander must request the medical practitioner to send a copy of the written report to the nearest office of the independent police investigation investigative directorate. Ipoisa leli elisebenza labu vulwa kona amatana wamele lona 
litsele udokotela ukuthi abhale incwadi ayithumela kumaphoyisa ukuthi ayophenya The community service center or station commander must ensure that the matter is reported in accordance with paragraph 4 of the national instruction 6 of 2014 the prevention and combating of torture of persons futhi lokho kwamele kuhlangane nomthetho siseko oyikuthi wabekwa ngokushawa nokulinyazwa kwabantu ababoshini the written report received by the station commander must be filed with the relevant warrant and body receipts with the following Musi Tsemba Sibana Uti Umundu Obega Letiwe Uyena Umuzi Sitemba Sibana SAP is 14 stroke 5 stroke 7 stroke 2020 Wapa Anwa Genu Nombono Uguti Yena Waegate Epa Eva Lebenga Weyit Nombono SAP is 14A R139 4878 Charge possession of illegal ammunition Next of King informed Umundo Wagubo Wachelwa Uh, sorry, my lord, I can't read the, this word. And In any case, my lord, I see we close to the normal sitting time when we are adjourned at the stage. You see the witnesses all struggling with the heat in, in, in this courtroom. Is the camera available tomorrow? That's correct. Okay, okay we are adjourned until tomorrow 10.